Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, Welcome to Cardiff's International Arena, where we have a stacked night of boxing for you. First up, as always, before the bell. But this is the main card from 7 p.m. this evening. Have Sandy Ryan challenging for the vacant WBO welterweight world title. Then the rematch between Gavin Gwynn and Craig Woodruff. The first fight was an absolute cracker. No doubt the rematch will be exactly the same. Then we have Zelfa Barrett versus Jason Sanchez for the WBO continental super featherweight title. Then the big punch in Jordan Thompson in with experience. Luke Watkins for the IBF European Cruiserweight title. And that sets up what promises to be an unbelievable main event between the champion, Chavkat Rakimov, and former IBF World Super Featherweight Champion, Joe Cordina. He comes into this fight with a frightening reputation. A dangerous southpaw and rack him off. This is my opportunity. I'm going to grab it with both hands. Oh, yeah, what a main event that promises to be. But first up, on before, before the bell, we have London's unbeaten heavyweight, Miles Gordon Derby, in with Swindon's Phil Williams. Then we have the Welsh former amateur star, Sammy Lee, in with Julius Zudowski's. Then we move over to Newport's unbeaten super featherweight, Nathan Howes versus Jafias Foray. Then the extremely entertaining Brandon Scott. He's been brilliant this week. In with Ronaldo Kajina. And then unbeaten titleist Sky Nicholson from Australia. 6-0 in with Linda Lecker. Well, our MC David Diamante is in the ring for the introductions of our first contest. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome everybody here tonight to the Cardiff International Arena in the beautiful city of Cardiff, Wales, for a big night of World Championship Professional Boxing live on DAZN. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored tonight by Betfred, Stagefront, and JD Sports. All of tonight's bouts are sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control, the Stewart charge is Mr. Ron Pavet. Introducing your third man in the ring for our first contest from Swansea scoring referee Chris Jones. And now ladies and gentlemen four rounds of boxing scheduled in the heavyweight division. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner with the black trunks with the green trim. He scaled 18 stone 10 pounds bang on. This 48 fight veteran hails from Swindon. Ladies and gentlemen introducing Phil Williams. Williams. 
And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the yellow with red trim. He scaled 17 stone, two pounds, two ounces. His young professional record thus far perfect, three fights, three victories. Fighting out of Newport, Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Miles Flash Gordon Darby. Flash Gordon Darby. Okay, boxes in you come. Okay, obey my word of command at all times. Defend yourself at all times. Keep all your punches above the waist. Any questions, blue? Any questions, red? Touch gloves. Good luck, boys. So here we go. The first contest of the evening. Stack card tonight. In the red corner, Phil Williams. Seconds out. Rome versus London's Miles Gordon Darby. And I am joined by Boxing Royalty this evening. Has that ever been said to you, Barry? Barry Jones and, of course, Sonny Edwards. How are you both doing, gents? I'm good. I'm, it's nice to have someone around my stature. In, in, in size, not in, not in the boxing, because you know, Sonny's a, a maverick, isn't he? He's brilliant. We love him. He's a world champion. He's going to unify the division. And we're all waiting for that, son. Right, now, I appreciate the words. and. Um... Buzzing to be down here on the zone, commentating on, on one of the first shows of, that's come up as a zone fighter. So I've seen Williams a few times as well before. I believe he boxed on my undercard when he fought David Adelaide, um, and he looked tough. But you know, if um, Gordon here wants to start putting on some pressure, letting his hands go, I think Williams isn't the hardest opponent to hit. Yeah, Williams has been on the circuit for a long, long time. He's been in with the likes of British champion Fabio Wardley, Camille Soloski, Scotland's Jay McFarlane, and David Adelaide, and the Romford Ball, Johnny Fisher. So he's been around, been in with some very good fighters. He knows how to hang about. To give him the opportunity to, to land the big shots. He will. In the other corner, Miles Gordon Darby. Spent most of his time boxing around the, the white collar and unlicensed scene. A couple of other fights I've seen, doesn't look like he can punch. In his first three fights as a pro, he's gone the distance, but he's been in there with durable opponents, but boxing nicely on the back foot here, piercing out the jab. You can see why, because you know, he's not knocking people out. His upper body movement's really good, his judgment of the distance is good. He's making a miss by, you know, by just a couple of inches. But he's moving back all the time, like that, and, and always looking to evade. And kind of quick rather than rather than just sit on the foot and on the back foot sometimes and push through like he did there a little bit yeah he landed a nice right hand there williams a little reminder to darby sorry sonny to put that left hand up well yeah i'd like to see Dar um, gordon darby giving him something to think about more he's letting his opponent get to the edge of range and start touching the target and then he's trying to sort of react or block and slip and it's given williams a bit more confidence than he's probably used to getting in the first round of a professional fight he has a good job there, doesn't he? Good and dive. That's you know, maybe just stepping behind a little bit more. It's fast. It's coming up on the way, so it's hard to defend against as well. Had to see clearly just a little bit of a step with the front foot, a bit more weight on that shot, and he'll be far more effective. And I think when he's leading off here as well, he's finding that target a lot easier. Um, oh, big we... left hook. Gordon Darby, the light hurt. Williams over that shot, the leg seemed just different for a second. You can see on the look on his face just changed there as well for Phil Williams. But he's swinging back here. Yeah, he certainly felt one of those Williams to slow wall back to that red corner. It was a left hook that landed from Gordon Darby. Let's see if we can see the shot. Yeah, there you go. To see the legs slightly stiffen. And he got the follow up there as well, like, like dipping down to the body, and that was good. But again, just leaning back, and as Sonny was saying, sometimes you need to lean back to get a bit more leverage on the shots, and he sort of did it there a little bit. And there was a little step with the back foot there, he gets a little bit more of a talk, doesn't he, on the shot. And he took a split second for the shot to land before panicking, thinking about, I don't know, closing the gap or getting away. He kept stationary, and then there was another shot there, and he, and he switched a target with the body, and he landed again. Looks like he's dropping the I thought. Clearing his throat. I'm not too, 10 too seconds. sure if he fancies much more of this. Looking at the referee. I don't know if there's that's an issue with the throw. No, he's going to continue. A couple of deep breaths from Phil Williams, but 
definitely not the best body language to no. go for the second round of a fight with that. I think this is down to Gordon Darby now to put the pressure on Williams and try and make the more experienced but older man quit. But he's on the front foot, Williams. Right idea for Williams as well. You've got to smother the woman. You've got a guy who's clever, make you miss. They'll close the gap quick. Put him in a bit of pressure. Quite nimble, Gordon Darby, for a man of his stature. Um, both his feet and his, his, his head and his upper body is moving at the same time as well. He's doing two or three defences at, at, at once. Yeah, he swivels from the hips really well, doesn't he? Yeah, he's weighed in around the sort of cruiserweight limit in the first two of his contests and jumped right up to plus 200 pounds in his third contest. And you can see he still does have that nimble footwork, like you say, Sonny. Brought that up through into the heavyweight division, just moving nicely. Maybe that explains the flash type character on his uh, right leg of his shorts. Well spotted, Sonny. Uh, he don't get much past me. <laughs> Why's the other fella got a lion in his belly? <laughs> Tell us that. I don't have all the answers, Barry. <laughs> He's got Javante on uh, the back of his shorts, it looks like, Gordon Darby. Not sure if it's a relative or his prediction for the fight later. Well, I'll tell you what, what one fellow will say is both of your guys' eyesight are, uh, are on point. 2020 for sure. Well, we, we're sure we can't see above the waist. <laughs> <laughs> Good work from Williams on the front foot. Again, just trying to force the action. Gordon Darby looking comfortable on the back foot. Just poking out that jab, just looking to the feint there. A little right hand land for Williams there, but nothing of note again. I think Darby's moving quite well here in this in the first two rounds. But you do have to be careful, you know, when you make someone miss, and you know it's like certainly better than most, but makes, you enjoy it, don't you? But sometimes you've got to remember you've got to throw back. Mm. And every now and again, you, you know, you, you make someone miss and enjoy it because you feel like you're clever. Well, could, the problem is, if you keep making a miss to some judges, you're getting outworked. Even yeah, if they're yeah, on the yeah, arms yeah. that's not really landing, the more shots thrown sometimes, the positive work is and the when, impressor. And when you look at this, it is only a four rounder, so you've got to be careful, you've got to stay switched on, but. Shades of Billy Joe Saunders there. Nearly got him caught down there. <laughs> Just watching the, the shot whistle pass. Cr credit to Williams. The end of that first round. Didn't look like fancy much more of this, but he's tried to force the action. He's been on the front foot. He's done the right thing. He's closed the gap. Not, not, not allowing really Gordon Darby to get those longer shots in, in the play. Not allowing him time to set up the attacks. Bit of a slapping right hook around the side, but you don't want that to land flush. It's the end of the second round. Little trot back to the corner from Gordon Darby. He's a relaxed, he's just comfortable. Williams in the red corner, option to stand. He's having trouble breathing, isn't he? Williams in the corner again after this round. But I thought he had a good round there, Williams. He, after you know, being comprehensively on boxing the first, he tried to put the pressure on. Gordon Darby smothered his work, you know. Okay, a lot of Williams' moves on clean landing, but he was the, the one, as, as Sonny said, he was always being aggressive, looking to work, and, and that can have an effect. Now I'm starting to think the end of that first round was a bit more tactical, you know, the old classic bait and a switch. It looked like you want to quit in the ring and then come out and get him in the second. <laughs> yeah, a bit of false sense of security from Williams, perhaps. Let's see how he commits to this first Quarters round. 10 seconds! A good opener. I'm enjoying this opener. Seconds out, round three. Here we go into the third round of this heavyweight contest. And again, Williams on the front foot. Oh, Gordon Darby just missing with the right hand. And the follow by the left hook. Moving nicely on the back foot. It's a beautiful jab there, isn't it, from Gordon Darby? Really good. So you can get weight in there when you're moving. You, know, you can just you, you skip around, just hold your feet for a second, push off, and then back on the feet again. And then it's just about anticipating when you're actually holding and when you're sticking. A lot of fighters, that's what they struggle with every time they throw there. They're falling in or they're stepping out. They don't know where they're trying to be. And I'm quite impressed with Gordon Darby here, how he is setting off his post, having that strong lead foot, and then just firing a jab through it. Whether it's landing or not, he's not really paying too much to throw it either. Would you like to see him creep forward a little bit more? Whether he goes forward or not, he needs to be busier with his hands, I think. Really. There's a target that he hits in front of him, and, he, and he's making Williams miss when he wants to with, with ease, but he's still allowing Williams to get too close when he doesn't need to. And I think you can tell 
with that sort of thing is to the white collar background. If you grew up on the amateurs, the much faster pace, the, the bouncing, 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 you see when they first turn pro, they're usually a bit amateurish where you wouldn't, you know, say he's an amateurish style, but he's a lot more sort of heavy footed, slow, monotonous with his work. And that can work at a level like this, but it's when you've got someone that's gonna push it and, and drag you to the harder parts of the fight. Nice jab. Gordon and Darby and demonstrating again his nimble footwork and he landed a lovely left to the body, just catching the right uppercut on the guard of Williams. Great head movement there from Gordon Darby. Comfortable there just to sit down a little bit, bend his legs a bit and just turn those shoulders like that, make, make Williams miss. And again, his lateral movement, the way he um, anticipates the lead shot coming in, adjusts his head. I would like to see, you know, a little shot there. It doesn't have to be the biggest, but I think sometimes Gordon Darby's in scoring shot positions, but not letting the trigger go and just letting the action sort of... Yeah, learning on the job. Gordon Darby's come from the unlicensed scene, no amateur background, like you say, Sonny. So he's learning on the job. Round's important, sparring important. But demonstrating some, some good skills for someone that doesn't have that amateur background. Nice work on the back foot behind the jab. Just trying to bait Williams into that right uppercut. Just grazing the target there. Followed it up with the right hand over the top. That's good work. Yeah, it looked yeah, because wasn't really well timed there. Just, just waiting for Williams to just get over that front foot before he let that uppercut go. And I do think when he lets that right uppercut go, he's been looking dangerous. It's been looking like his money shot, but he's been sticking a lot more behind the lead hand until this round, I think. He took a nice short left hook inside from Williams there. More of an arm shot, but again, another reminder. Can't get sloppy, especially in these four round fights. Against game heavyweights, as you see here, like Williams. Burning the gas tank in the last 10 seconds, Williams there. Finished quite well. Took a couple of shots though, nevertheless. A breathing very heavy. <laughs> slow, slow walk back to the corner from Phil Williams. Seconds out. <laughs> he definitely got a problem under right? there, yeah, I think, with some coming with his chest maybe, but the show there's a little bit of a decent little fight back here from Williams. He's been the pressure for that round. I think that was a good round there from Gordon Darby. Picked the shots really well. The jab was solid and strong. Again, it, it, we're, we're critiquing him, of course, so we're just saying a little bit too much bigger gaps in between the work, yeah. I would say. That's all, but apart from that, you know, he's showing some, some really clever skills. Yeah, tempo. But he's controlled the distance while well. he's moved nicely to, to both left and right. Poke the jab out. Looks uh, for four to the defensive Phil Williams, who again has shown that he's durable, he's game. Seconds out, fourth and final round. Right. the flu season as well, so, you know. Here we go, last round of this opener here, the Cardiff International Arena. Some of the early spectators starting to take their seats for what will be a banged out arena, no doubt, late this evening for that world title fight. But back to this one, game Phil Williams trying to close the gap, but again, Gordon Darby working nicely on that back foot, missing with the right uppercut, but landing the left hook. And even though it has been quite one pace um, from Gordon Darby, he's been in control. There hasn't been too much moments of anguish or, or, or panic. Um, and I think, yeah, you've got Frank Smith and Eddie Hearn, Tom Dallas at ringside. It would be interesting to see where they sort of fit um, a Gordon Darby into the, the heavyweight, or you said borderline cruiserweight, maybe bridgeweight um, division. But there's definitely the fights there, isn't there? I'm saying bridgeweight. <laughs> Not a fan, Barry. That's yeah. I'm trying to get a WBC shot, uh, Barry. <laughs> that's better. With a heavy left hook, might not have landed flush, but it's the sort of pressure that's one of them shots are going to get through and do the damage. Yeah, he tucked up. Well, Williams taking that left hook. Just a little fainty enough, what I would say from Gordon Daly. As Williams has come forward with his hands a little faint, and they just lean over too far over the front foot off balance, and then you can rattle off a combination. Nice move. Yeah, good elusive headwork there on the back foot. I think as well, you, you start to see Gordon Darby start to throw off of that defence. The more he spends time in the ring, just missing with that right hand, but back comes Williams. And a little spring in the step from Gordon Darby, moving around nicely. And there's that right uppercut, lovely shot. And he does find it, and he finds it nice as well. 
but again, it's just he it doesn't take as much opportunities as I think he could with an opponent like Phil Williams here. And what are you telling them with a minute to go, Barry, um, in his in his fourth fight, fourth rounder? It's funny thing, because he's, he's winning the fight clearly. Oh, good shots. Can he win the fight clearly? You don't want to make any silly mistakes. You just start swinging from the rafters now and you know, having, having a little bit of a lottery running, you know, running the clock down a little lottery, lottery scenario. You know, who, who hits first? But he can't be busy. He can't rattle off a combination now and again, I think. Yeah, I think he's made a good display for him. It seems pretty critical, but I think you can see there's more in him. And that, I think that's why you're saying you should do this, you should do that, because you just see there's a little bit more he has in his locker that he could show us. And not having any knockouts on his record so far and looking like he's not going to get one here. I don't think it's down to his punch power. I think it's down to his punch output. I think when he gets his man buzzed, he's not going through that, that gear or the second gear. Yeah, good shots there from him. Oh, and then that left hook again. Leg stiffened up. Screams to Phil Williams. And good opening contest to open the night here at the Cardiff International Arena. I thought Corbin. we had a shot to dodge there, really. Yeah. <laughs> Colin Darby raising his arm. He'd be happy with that. It was a good workout against the experienced Phil Williams. It's funny because the corner will probably say, oh, brilliant, brilliant. The last 10 seconds, don't ever do that again. <laughs> don't ever do that again. He boxed well, though. He showed some lovely lateral movement. He made, it, he made Williams miss you know, with ease. He really did. The jab was good. You know, the uppercut was fantastic. There's loads of good things to pull from there. And, but you're always saying it's just that you can be a little bit busy. Don't big gaps in between the work that you do and you were much more efficient and, effect and effective fighter for that. And it's a lot easier to be critical at, you know, the four o'clock, the half four, the five o'clock fights because you, without saying that you're half expecting to know who's the winner. Yeah, of course, yeah. But the way he went about his business there, he didn't give too much opportunity to his opponent. Um, he pretty much for me won every second of the round of the fight. Yeah, good opening contest. So, RMC, David Diamante is ready. He has the scorecard. Over to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of action here in Cardiff, we go to referee Chris Jones' scorecard. It reads 39 to 37. For your winner, he's still undefeated, Miles Flash Gordon Darby. Yeah, good workout. For Gordon Darby goes to four and zero oh. as a heavyweight. Now he was asked some questions from Phil Williams, but he was in control. He was nice and relaxed, and he got the job done. And when you you look at schedules in boxing, none come better than the upcoming schedule on the zone. Sensational finish. I'm shocked. Oh! Shot. Big shots from Rocha. Carissa Shea! Hey, yes. Fight me. I think you're the top. Creme de la creme right here. I'm coming for you. schedule that is it really really is and also on the zone 250 classic fights that you can download Garcia unwrapped and of course there's the zone boxing show live that big one in the early hours of tomorrow morning Javante Davis versus Ryan Garcia massive massive fight huge bragging rights for the winner What schedule that is, lads? What's your what's your pick? For everything? Yeah. C Cordina points. Javante Davis late stoppage. And if we're gonna go as far as Katie Taylor, I think Katie Taylor nicks her own points as well. Sonny, what are you looking forward to? Um, uh, schedule. 
Well, straight up um, for tonight, obviously we're here. Joe Cordina Rakamov, I think that's a very good fight. I think Cordina looked exceptional in his world title charge. Obviously, he's hadn't had the time out of the injury. And even though Rakamov got hurt by Zelfa, Zelfa had to burn a lot of energy to stay a little bit ahead of a very competitive fight. Um, will it match the same? I'm not sure. I think Rakamov is very dangerous. I think he's got and, pressure. And and Joe, no, Joe's a smoother mover than, than, than Zelfa. Zelfa's more explosive, but he's... Make, he, he, he has to take a lot of energy the way he moves, doesn't he? It, yeah. it works for him, but, but yeah. yeah. And I think with Rakamov, he's very good in the fire. I think he, he can get into a fight, and Joe's a good friend of mine, and I'm completely backing him, want him to win. But the way I look at it from a neutral, Joe might take a lot of strength and belief from that last knockout, and it could be his undoing. And I think that happens a lot in fighting, and I hope it doesn't. That's exactly what I think. I've, I've been saying all week that you know, he, he, he knows he can punch, but I hope he doesn't come in thinking he's a puncher, because I said that if you allow Rakimov a little bit of success, it's going to be impossible to get him off you. Then you're in a fight from round one. I'm not saying Joe can't win it that way, but that makes it really difficult for him. And I think a boxing lesson is what it asked for, but coming in from a, you know, a punch from the gods to, to win the world title and sort of realize your dream, walking into that ring scene, Zelfa hurt him as well. I don't know, Cordina might be holding his feet a lot more. And against Rakamov, I'm not sure if that's the tactic. But you can get that punch in the play by just keep moving around the tag, keep spinning Rakamov, Rakamov and as, as he gets tired, he'll square his feet up like he did with Zelfa. Then you can hold your feet and let that shot go. And he blinds himself a lot, Rakamov. He really does. He throws with the intention, especially early on before he's missing. He just throws to hurt. It weren't until he got hurt that he started getting the front twos and threes and fours against Zelfa and just trying to weather him. And it, and it did work. He, he, he kind of mentally as well as physically broke him down by just making him work to be in the fight. Cordina is an excellent boxer. He's called the Welsh Wizard for a good reason. He's never, as, uh, as from a fighter, been considered a, a puncher, but a very, very good boxer. And I think it's the very good boxing that makes a world champion two times tonight. What a main event that promises to be, it really does. But next up, We've got contest number two here in the Cardiff International Arena. Our MC David Diamante is ready to introduce the fighters. Ladies and gentlemen from Cardiff, Wales, it's now time for a special light heavyweight attraction. Set to make his ring walk from Liepaja, Latvia. Please welcome Yuris Zondowskis. And now please welcome the young undefeated fighter from Swansea, Sammy. And here is Swansea's former GB star, Sammy Lee. He had a glittering amateur career, capturing the youth Commonwealth gold, along with a gold in the senior games in 2018 over in Australia. He's a six foot one southpaw. He comes into this contest 1-0 as a professional, winning his debut on points over six rounds back in December last year. Ladies and gentlemen from Cardiff, Wales, live on the zone. We are set to go with a special light heavyweight attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored tonight by Betfred, Stagefront, and JD Sports. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell from Swansea, scoring referee Chris Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the flame trunks with the white and blue trim. He scaled 12 stone, 11 pounds, 5 ounces. His professional record, six victories against five defeats, five of his six victories coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Leopaya, Latvia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yuri. Zundowskis. Zundowskis. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the white trunks with the gold trim. This Welsh southpaw scale 13 stone, 11 pounds, bang on. 
His young professional record, thus far perfect, one fight, one victory. Fighting out of Swansea, Wales, Sammy Lee. Lee. It'll be my word of command at all times. Defend yourself at all times. Keep all your punches above the waist. Any questions, red? Any questions, blue? Touch gloves. Good luck, boys. So the second out in as a professional for the talented former Look, amateur star, Sammy Lee. 24. Got a heavyweight heavyweight comes straight out to centre ring by a lovely crisp jab, Sonny. And it's good to see him back, to be honest. Sammy Lee was a, a very, very bright talent on GB. He was the Youth Commonwealth Games gold medalist. He was the Commonwealth Games gold medalist in 2018. Um, so it was a bit disappointing to see him, you know, maybe have a, a few years out of the gym. Um, but you see Lee in ringside as well. I know he put a lot of effort into convincing Sammy that he still had it. And now look at him back in um, the fight for the second time as a professional and um, really looking to push on. I like the way they're matching him as well, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be perfectly honest. Nice positive start from Sammy, Barry. Yeah, it is. You know, when he threw that jab, the first jab that came out, he just, he just he rolled his shoulders either side, sort of with like a little feint for a let it go. It was really clever, it was. Like an, an, obviously, a pre rehearsed movement, but it was really, really smart. Put one straight around the back of the head of Zodowski's. Just complaining to the referee. Just to come forward on the front foot, sort of marching forward. He's got to be careful doing that with his chin high, because someone like Sammy Lee... You've got to pivot out there, Sammy Lee. When he went back in straight lines there a little bit with the chin in the air, as you said. So you've got to, got to make sure when the, if he's more than two steps going backwards, then you've got to take that turn to either your left or your right. Easy for the southpaw just to spin on that front foot off to your, to your right-hand side. He needs to be careful he doesn't just get caught up with worrying about what lands um, Sammy and stays a bit more switched on when the shot's coming back. He does look like he's um, a level above right now, but it doesn't mean his opponent's not going to be dangerous, especially swinging those right hands over the top, which he's trying to do. Nice left to the body from Sammy Lee. He's carrying his chin a little high. He's got to be careful. I did mention in the, the ring walks there that Zodovki's in his six wins does have five by KOs, and one of those was against... Joe Giles at the York Hall, the popular Joe Giles, and he caught him in the second round and he never really recovered Giles and he was waved off late at that round. So he's got a win in him and he's got a knockout win in him. Lovely jab again from Sammy Lee. And that's why you shouldn't give for that chin. Don't give an opportunity to land. Looked like he shook his leg off there, Sammy Lee, like um, when they come together. But he's got good accuracy and spiteful hands, Sammy. Um, be good to see him go through the gears a little bit, but it is the opening round. I don't think he's really put a foot wrong. Um, and your man Zadowski is, is face is reddening and his body language is not looking the best here in the end of this opening round. Nice straight left. Down the guard of Zadowski's there. Beautiful shot from Sam Lee, demonstrating some of those skills that have made him such a successful amateur. But again, they're just switching off every now and again. He's boxing really well. You know, he's put his punches together really, really nice. The jab is on well, the soft ball stance is fantastic. Just every now and again, he switches off in range. He just has to take a few shots. And it's that switching off you can see. He's getting to the target. He's throwing his shot. And he's not really worried about what's coming back. And it's that shot that's making him be a little bit messy or making him get caught as, the way, as he's coming up. That's the seventh round of Sammy Lee's professional career in the bag. Nice and relaxed and composed. Zadokis throughout that first round. <laughs> Proving that he's very dangerous. I think it will be interesting to see what weight Sammy Lee settles at as well. Um, I know it got announced as a... Um, I know it got announced as a heavyweight, but I think he's more of yeah, a light heavyweight. Um, oh, and... And the fight has been... Caught. Well, as we were looking at the replays from that first round, as you rightly just said there, Sonny, the fight has been waved off. I'm not sure what Corn is 10 seconds. The issue is, sort of the, the corner man of Zadovkis is waving his, his arms as his shoulder right, point into the left shoulder of Zadovkis. So, looks like he swallowed it to me. I'll be well done. Yeah. But you can forgive him. I, I don't think he swallowed it. I, I could, no. It's not to be a it was a hard first round for him, but I, 
it, it, it wasn't. He, he's a hard it wasn't a fight. Yeah, no, he's been in. He's been that out sunny. Is, su sunny. He's fight, he wants to fight next week. Then that's his job, isn't it? To fight next week. Look at Sunny. Look, his standards are up there now, aren't they? I mean. <laughs> well, it'll be over the moon, Sammy. He won't care how he's got his first stoppage, but he's got it. You see there, just. But we well, want to see more of him, don't we? That's the thing for us, for us as fans. We want to see yeah. more of Sammy Lee. We want to see what he's like in round two, three, and four. Yeah, well, that's the first stoppage of Sammy Lee's career. He moves on to 2 0. Zadovkis, that injury, withdrawing after the first round. Let's head over to our MC for the verdict of that second contest of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Chris Jones calls a halt to this contest as the red corner is unable to continue. The official time of the stoppage after round number one, declaring your winner by TKO. He's still undefeated, Sammy Lee. Yeah, I'd like to say, Sammy Lee moving to 2-0 oh as a pro. Moving along nicely, seventh round in his career. We wanted to see more, but team Gavin Rees, former world champion there, be happy with his charge that he's got the job done. And I think you could see the uh, genuine excitement that Sammy Lee was trying to contain there. I think he knows, okay, this isn't what he turned pro to do right now, but just being here, being back in the process, his career moving forward, the, you know, the platform he's on, the arena he's on, you can see he's genuinely enjoying himself. And for a fighter that probably had to do a little bit to get back to this position right now, it's good to see genuinely. Yeah, good performance from Sammy Lee. But what a fight we have in the early hours of tomorrow morning. This really is a blockbuster. Two boxers. Whose time has come. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Ready for the destinies. Two fighters, one opportunity for supremacy. I'm gonna walk you to the deep waters and I'm gonna drown you for the crowd. He doesn't have the heart of the champion. Two warriors, raising the stakes, raising the game, raising the drama. It is over! Now we're gonna see what this kid's made of! This is it, April 22nd. Destinies will be written. Tip. Top. Time's up. What a mouth watering clash that is. Huge, huge fight between Javonta Davis and Ryan Garcia. That's the early hours of tomorrow morning. And the 6th of May, that huge fight between Canelo and John Ryder. John Ryder paved his way to this opportunity. Doesn't get much tougher, but he fancies the job. Then the X Series continues. KSI versus Joe Fournier, May 13th. And another huge clash between Katie Taylor and Chantel Cameron. All the marbles going to be contested on Saturday, May the 20th. In Dublin, you can catch all. Might be his name. Sixth of May. No, it's a it's a two horse race. But for, for you, Barry, would it be one of the biggest upsets in boxing? Yeah, I mean, of course it would be. You can have to see, even though he's, even though Canelo's coming off a loss, which is maybe the best time to get him, of course. He's still Canelo, and it's Mexico, and it's a and it's a packed out stadium. I would say about John Ryder, you know him better than I. I don't think he'd be overall by it all, though. In John's, in John's already quite illustrious career, let's be honest, he's been fantastic. He's been a way opponent always. He Billy Joe Saunders on a different network. I, I commented on that fight, but when they were British at Commonwealth level, it was a very close fight, which I thought Billy won, but it was only by a couple of points. I remember Barry Hearn was over my shoulder shouting at me because he thought that, that John Ryder won it. That was quite scary at the time. But, and, but he, he was still, you know, he showed you, oh, then he could compete at then at that level, when they were that level, you know, against Callum Smith, who lots of people thought he won that fight, including me, to be honest. And, and then, you know, he didn't get over the line. The Danny Jacobs fight was a close fight, but either way, he's at the level of all these world-class fighters. So why shouldn't he get the shot? That, that, that people, you look on paper and go, oh, he's not going to last a round with Canelo. That's what people say. 
But when you look at John and you know John, you know his temperament and how he will not be, not be fussed about being the, the B-side, because that's what he's been on his career. He's going to be used to it. He relishes that now. And not only that, I think he's a different sort of problem to a lot of the fighters. I think Callum Smith really found that out, I think, B. Joe as well. He's ra he judges his range well. He's got a very um, capable defence. He's got good movement around the target, and he picks his moments quite well. I don't think he's an easy night's nice fight for anyone, and I think he might be the naturally, actually more bigger man against Canelo. In, maybe not in sight, like height-wise, it might be quite similar, but broader shoulders, actual physicality. I think if Canelo goes in to just bully him, like he's been trying to do his last four or five fights, that's what I think the problems come. I think Canelo picking his time a bit more and breaking him down is has more say, success. I would say though, so we, we get a bit, of, a bit more of a reality check to all of us, that I do think that John Ryder's style with a low right hand, it's not a great matchup against for him against Canelo. I think that's gonna that that'll be a good thing for Canelo. A guy who's gonna maybe try and edge forward towards him with his hand though. I know he's always used that. He took that chin into his shoulder really well, and, and it works for him, John Ryder. I didn't think it would when he turned pro. Though, though I thought he's gonna this episode that was gonna come and stuck, and it's worked for him. But I'm not sure. I think for Canelo, the way he holds spike for with his punches and the way he punches up and down the target. I think that's that's not going to be a great deal. Yeah, it doesn't get much tougher for London's John Ryder. I think we may have some shots here of the Mexican superstar, Sao Alvarez Canelo, the champion. At the young age of 15, he was destined for great things. Oh! It's over! It's over! He knocked him out cold! Oh, wow, nice shot! Canelo, Canelo, best fighter in the world. Thank you. Canelo is the beast. Box up range, box up close. I honestly believe nobody can beat Canelo out. Yeah, so much to look forward to in that fight on May 6th. Really is a mouth watering clash. But back to tonight's main event. Shabakat, Rakimov, the champion against the former. IBF Super Featherweight Champion Joe Cordina. So much to look forward to this evening. Shafkat Rakimov, he's tough, he's strong, and he's fit, and he can punch hard. I always say, you have to have a little bit more than just that to beat me. I'm a little bit better than him in, in all the boxes. I believe I got a very good boxing brain. My ring IQ is second to none. <laughs> My footwork's a different level. I'm good on the inside. I can fight that close. I can fight going backwards. I can pretty much do it all. Don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect in any way, shape or form. And I'm not a fin finished article. He has to have a little bit more than just being tough and strong and being able to punch to beat me. Hey, let your hands go, a little quick burst. Go, Joe, let's go, come on. Good. And again, one more then, one more. Nice. Nice, that's it. Change your level as well. It's good. You know, Joe knows what he's up against. He's a world level fighter and you know it's gonna be a tough fight, but me personally, you know, I think Joe is the best super featherweight in the world and I think he's gonna prove it come April twenty second. He ain't really bringing anything that I've never seen before. I've been around the world. I've boxed 180 times as an amateur, almost 200 times all in all. I'll tell you straight, there's not a man on the planet that I fear. I'll find a way to put you on the deck. At the minute, it's all technical stuff, trying to get fit. It's all about the timing. Get the timing right. You're what, what the arse will be stuff for. So the closer we'll get to the fight, the better he'll get. Every now and then, you put in your little quick burst. Pop, 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 pop like that, all right? You better be, because I don't want no excuses once um, I get him out of there. Look, ready, I'm ready. Uh, I like his aggressiveness. <laughs> If he's a good puncher, he has power with the left and right hand both. 
Being at home is good, but sometimes being away is good also because you don't have a lot of pressure on you. And it, it can work both ways, obviously, but the thing is, the best fighter will win. Не важно, сколько раундов в этот бой продлится, надо держаться одного плана. И мы с командой держались одного плана и довели свой результат до выигрыша. Это срочно победа. А эти планы мы никому не расскажем. Для него и для всех это большой секрет. World title. It gets no bigger than this, and you're just in our way. Потому что результат боя не будет зависеть от решения судьи. Let's have a look at the talent on the tape. Joe Cordina, just slightly older, 31. Debut for Rakimov. 2015, two years later for Joe Cordina, and the record 17, 0 and 1, 14 stoppages from the tough, physical, physically strong Shabcat Rakimov. 15 and 0 from Joe Cordina, and showing in two fights against a Gowron Hernandez that he can really, really punch. Not much between them when it comes to rounds. Box 91 for Shabcat Rakimov, 81. For Cordina, and though you see the 78% KO record from Rakimov, I think that's more physical strength as opposed to one punch knockout power. You see the 60% from Joe, but like I said before, those shots against Agawa and Hernandez, that right hand carries serious weight when delivered properly. What a fight! I mean, when you, you look at this main event, Barry, we spoke a lot about Cordina. There has to be a lot of improvements made, in my opinion, from Rakimov, when you look at that Zelfa Barra performance. Yeah, I, you know, obviously, I was ringside for that fight, and so when I was looking at Rakimov before that, he was a much cleverer fighter. You know, he was a, he's aggressive, and aggressive fighters who come forward at the pace are going to take punches, are going to make mistakes. It's inevitable, because you're trying to rush your work almost. But. He would get you on the ropes, and then he, he, he'd, he'd get you where he really wanted you, then he'd move on the target, he'd take a different angle, so it's hard for you to fire back. You have to turn your body ever so slightly to fire back, and then he gets you. That half, that little that millisecond, half a second, whatever it is, is too long to wait, too long to give him a chance to set up a shot, and that's where, that's where he gets the stoppages, hit you with from the angles you can't defend against. With Zelfa, I think he went in with no respect. I think he went in just thinking, I'm going to walk through this fan. I just wear him out, wear him out. You might have seen the Chico Martinez fight and thought, you know, with Zelfa struggled at times in that fight, or quite a lot in that fight, let's be honest, and thought, I'm just going to walk through this guy. And he wanted, all he did is walk up the shots. He just, you know, he literally gifted his chin just over his front. He was leaving his well, half his body was over his front foot, so he was, he was a play for that uppercut. Zelfa's got a fantastic uppercut. It's like his best, his best shot. That and the left hook are the best shots he has because he whips him in. There's so much. You know, so much whipping his shots. Zelfa, I don't think he's a huge puncher, but he's so much whipping and whipping his shots that if you if you put yourself there, you're not gonna you're not gonna be on the, you're not gonna be standing after that. To be fair though, with Rakamov, I feel like I feel like he knew that he needed to get Zelfa fighting hard early. I think as much as it that might have been a part of I don't think he's gonna hurt me, I think he could see Zelfa's strengths of adjusting, dancing around the rings. He'd shown it in his last couple of fights, where before that he hadn't really. But after he got hurt, Rakamov, it's like he learned all the lessons in between the rounds. He weren't just walking in trying to throw a single. He was getting to the edge of range and coming in with two threes and fours, waiting for the first shot to miss. And what Zelfa was doing, because he throws so heavy hands, sharp hands, really, um, like you said, whip, really trying to get the punch to the target as quickly as possible. But what that does is, by round seven, eight, or nine, it's, it's not efficient. It's hard to maintain that level of intensity from shots. When you're throwing twos and threes and fours over a 12 round, I think Rakamov knew that, and I think he, he, I think he was mainly trying to get Zelfa to really exert energy. And the moment that he started slowing down, he wasn't even thinking then. He was just getting pushed, pushed, pushed. We weren't loading up, just solid, crisp shots. And that's what broke him down. But it's a, Zelfa's a fast switch fiber sort of fighter. So when you when you have that, every move is really sharp. So it looks really impressive. But again, 
your energy is going to wait. Like, like a lot of other boost fights with a wide stance, it's, it's effective, really effective. But and it's twitchy as well. Yeah, and it works, and it works, and it works for loads of them. But it, if you have some raw power at times, then it can, the later rounds, you're risking that to get to get a big lead. It's kind of similar with what, what happened with, with Connor. Yeah, of course, yeah. It's better, no, but if you have the power of a Groves or a, or a, or a Hay, it doesn't usually get that far. You know, you get it, you, you get him in the middle, early or middle rounds. But I think with, with Zelba, with a fast twitch movement, he's always going to win. But it's a really risk for Rakimov to give away so many early rounds. Because then you start the pack, you make mistakes. He was making mistakes by squaring his feet up. And I think if Joe can stay, for me, for, for Cordina, it's one step back once, and, and then a pivot all the time. Just keep constantly turning back. Well, even if it's defensive, to stay safe, make him turn, frustrate him, force him to make mistakes. Don't never let him back you up. Yeah. Well, it's a brilliant, brilliant main event. It really is. It's a great schedule. And this is the place to watch it all on the zone. Welcome to the zone. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation and it's special. At home or on the move, you can connect fans to the heart of the sport on any device. My word! Easily browse at the zone schedule to see upcoming fights or catch up on recent events. Never miss a punch by setting reminders that alert you on your mobile device. Have a gay fight night, key moments. We play the rounds of the action you want to see again and again. Watch over 30 years of archive fights, award winning documentary films, how the shines, how many fight, exclusive to zone boxing show brings you all the latest news and interviews every weekend. Best innovations, biggest stars, the greatest fights. Only on the show. To on the zone. But before the bell, we've had Miles Gordon Darby with his fourth professional contest against Phil Williams. We've just seen Sammy Lee win after retirement from Zadowski's after that first round. And next up, we have Newport's Nathan Howes in with Jafias Fore. Brandon Scott follows in another super featherweight contest. The entertaining Brandon Scott, should I say, against Ronaldo, Gina, and then we finish with the unbeaten Australian multi titleist Sky Nicholson in with Linda Letter. Well, the MC's ready for the super featherweight contest between Nathan Howes and Jafias Foray. David Diamante, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen from Cardiff, Wales, we're set to go with a special super featherweight attraction. Set to make his way to the ring from Oldbury, please welcome Jaffius Foray. Yeah, here is the tough Jaffius Foray. You look at his record, there's only one win, there's 12 losses, but from those 12 losses, only two have come from KO. He certainly suggests he's better than his record does. He's boxed on some big cards against some decent opponents. He looks uh, to throw big bombs when he has the opportunity. But you need to put him in his place. Beat the fight out of him. Jafias Foray. He's a danger man. And now entering the arena from Newport, Wales, the undefeated Nathan Howell. There he is, Newport's Nathan Howell. Five and I was a professional. Five and a seven time now. As a professional, having drawn one. Last contest back in February, he drew the top. Nick Rack, you know, Jose Perez. He's going to be desperate to get back to winning ways. In front of his home crowd here in Cardiff.
ladies and gentlemen from Cardiff, Wales, live on the zone. We are set to go with a special super featherweight attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stagefront, and JD Sports. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell, scoring referee from Bridge End, Reese Carter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, four rounds of boxing scheduled in the super featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the gold and black. He scaled the super featherweight limit of nine stone, four pounds, bang on. This 14 fight southpaw veteran fights out of Old Mary. Please welcome Jaffius. Mini Man Foray. Foray. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the purple with white trim. He scaled nine stones, six pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign as a professional with a record of five victories, no defeats, one draw, fighting out of Newport, Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Nathan Howells. Howells. Right, gentlemen, you professionals, you know the rules. Keep it clean, listen to my instructions, and defend yourself at all times. Good luck, lads. Shake hands. Okay. Seconds out. Round one. Here we go. First round of this super featherweight contest between Nathan Howes from Newport, just down the road. This is Jafias Foray. Have you seen much of Nathan Howes, Barry? I, I, I live closer to you than I do to Nathan, no? Aaron? You do? <laughs> I do, don't I? But, um, yeah, he's a talented kid, got a lovely good balance and you know, really nice jab, fat, nice fast feet. So all the, all, all the ingredients to make a good fighter. And these are the fights that you know, developed from that. His opponent, Foray, in the red corner. Like I said there, I do feel he's better than his record suggests. He can be outboxed, as you see there. It's a nice jab, triple jab from Howes. Met his last contest out in Newcastle. He lost to Adam Reichard. He dropped Foray in the last round, but Foray come firing back for the remainder of that contest. And as you say that, he lands a good right hand. Yeah. Um, the away fighter here. He's long, isn't he? And that's the thing, you know, when you take that step out sometimes, you know, you've got fighters with a long reach. That but extra, extra few inches there, they just tap you. We've seen in the past, certainly against Adam Reichardt, like I say, in that last contest in Newcastle, he is a sucker to an uppercut for a... It's quite short, you can see the guard's quite wide, and he just takes a right hook from Hauser, just moves nicely to his right after he throws the shot. But as well, you kind of know what to expect when uh, you see Paul and uh, everyone in the corner with, from BCB. Yeah, the, the fight is going to be fit, they're going to be tough, and they're going to come to really have a go. They don't, they're not in the business of coming here and just being happy to be a part of it. So I'm expecting a, a gutsy performance and nothing else here. And then the fight's for the prospects, you know, for, for the development of the prospect, that's what you want, because you want to be able to practice what you do in the gym, but also you want, it's got to be a real scenario where you know, the guy's going to fire back if you make a mistake, or if your jab comes back low, then you, got, you have to take a right hand. Yeah, it keeps you honest, it keeps you sharp. Not only that, it teaches you the actual lessons, and performance-wise, I think every boxer would rather fight someone that's really coming to have a go. Well, there's gaps then, isn't there? Than the crab that just is at circles from corner yeah. to corner to corner. Um, I think it's quite in the mix here right now. I think both fighters are landing some shots. I'll, I'll, I'd probably be favouring the homer fight with some of the crispier shots and um, the lead hand work, especially in the first minute of the round. But I think this has turned out to be quite a good little yeah. four-round of this. There's some positive start from, from both fighters. Nathan Howes, like I say, will be desperate to get back to winning ways. He is unbeaten as a pro, but did draw his last contest, like I say, against that tough Nicaragua and Jose Perez. So, being in Cardiff, stone throw away from where he lives, will be desperate to win. Getting backed up, though. Ooh, the ship's a right hand, yeah? Yeah, big right hook from 4A. Finishing the round strong. Could that be enough just yeah. to edge the round? It was probably the best shot of the round for me, um, right in the last, and for the first bit of the fight, there was some unbothered. Yeah. Next up, we have unbeaten 
Australian Sky Nicholson. Been very accomplished so far as a professional, picking up the Commonwealth title. I think the inaugural Commonwealth title followed that up with a WBC silver title win. Looking composed, looking relaxed, as she always does. Always enjoys these occasions. Decorated amateur. And she move on to, to seven and over as a professional. And Bonnet's ten seconds. Call out the big names in the division. Back to this one. Seconds out. Round I think two. Fowry gets off his uh, corner quite confident there, off his story. Yeah, he certainly finished that opening round really, really strong. And like you say, Sonny, was it enough to nick the round? Here we go into the second round of this contest. Oh, he takes another right hand from 4A. He's got to get that chin down. Well, I think this is a mistake. He's coming out in the second round, trying to prove himself, trying to prove himself the better fighter. He's a better boxer, I think. Maybe not a better fighter. He should come to that. The first round, when 4A had a bit of success, rather than just stick to his boxing, what was working for him. Oh. Yeah, he, he, wanted to, he wanted to put the pressure on and fight it back. And you don't mix with a guy like this, do you? Just get back to what you know. And he's finding that right hand over the top. Too easy for right now, right now for um, Howell's corner. He's shouting him to move his feet, establish the jab, get back to what was working in the first minute and a half. You've got to move your feet. You've got to take a bigger step out with, with a guy with a, bit, with a longer reach. So sometimes you can't judge the distance. You've got to come down out lower. You've got to change the, the height of your, of your body rather than sometimes uh, coming out is okay, fast. But sometimes you've got to change the height. I think the problem with young fighters sometimes at this stage of the career they don't want to be seen to be giving up ground in the ring they don't want to be seen to be getting backed up so they're trying to hold their feet they're taking one step holding like he did there and then it's getting messy because he's not opening up the space they're giving himself no real room to work here at house oh, those jabs as well from house coming back to his chest i think that's allowing the Again with his chin, yeah. Yeah, chin up he just got to get that chin down does have a nice relaxed smooth style and the build up to this fight he did strike me as a very laid back person and sometimes that sort of personality can transfer into the ring but looking focused here again when he lets his hands go he's just wide open to that right hand and Foray seems to be timing that now going back in straight lines there though behind the jab of how I was going to punch in twos. He's punching in threes, but he's getting caught down on that third shot. Just punch in twos and then move. Take the angle, go again. Leave it nice and sharp. It can be sharp work, and you can be busy with it. But punching in threes allows allows you allows the other guy to fire back with him. But Farre is kind of getting to the target, trying to land when he gets in, holding his feet, holding his guard, and punching through Howells, yeah. especially when he stops working or they're trading together. Yeah, it's been a little greedy Howells with the work. Nice one two left hook though. Taking on the gloves by four A's. Gets, right hand. Yeah, throws up right hand, gets around the guard, a short right uppercut. Creeps in as well from four A. And this is the problem of the four rounders. If you give if you give the man in the red corner the blue uh, the first round, then it's a really hard task, especially if he goes in uh, two rounds down after this. That's a better right hand though from Howard. You see the angle he did that left shoulder when you see that right hand there holds. One problem I see with Hauser, I think every every shot he's throwing is coming out the same sort of rhythm, the same sort of intensity. So he's not really taking his opponent by surprise. Everything is move your feet, let your hand go. Move your feet, let your hand go. That's, that's where that feint comes in so well. Because even if you punch at the same tempo, the feint can break it up. And even then, when he does drop his hands and try to get out, he's getting caught up with this. It's dangerous to be leaving your chin in that much of a vulnerable position. Two rounds in the bag. Foray proving again. Difficult, awkward opponent. Just him trying to work his way back into the fight here, holes. But then, as he's as he's coming up the body with the punches, which is not a bad idea. But he's coming straight up. The chin is too high. The legs a little bit too close together, maybe. And then takes the right hand there. I thought he was, he was happy. As Sonny said, just to cover up, block the shots, and fire off off your last punch or punch with you. And being the heavy handed of the two, when they both land, it's for his punches that have more of an impact. So you're Tony Borg in the corner there. You're just saying, keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate the work, don't get greedy. Bonus 10 Pick seconds. The shots. And genuinely, I think he might have a little bit to do here. Um, Ruben Howes. Second out, round, round three. Round. In the third round we go. Like Sonny just said, it is only a four-rounder, and there's a case to say that 4A's done 
Any more work in those opening two rounds. Hold, hold by the nick the first window, possibly for me. Yeah, it was close, yeah. but it was just that right hand at the end for me. Yeah. I think the problem right now of Howes' movement, what I'm seeing, his back leg is he's getting stuck. He's moving over his front foot and he's sort of putting himself in a off-balance position. I think even now, look where his feet are, his, his knees half like it's not even holding his body weight. Looks like he's controlling the distance a bit better here, Howes. The start of this third round. Pinpoint and push for a exactly where he wants him. Fly through with a jab, but after these exchanges, Sonny, just, just fancy foray to, to land that right hand. And I think there's not enough action going on, which is really drawing you to what Ruben is doing. He's he's sitting off a little bit now. He's not just coming in and trying to force the pace. But now there's getting to a point where when nothing is really happening, whose work are you favouring? Are you favouring the aggression? Pushing forward again. Four eight. Yeah, that double jab. And I've just been corrected there off the, by, by, by Barry, that is Nathan. And it's his son's name that I've probably written <laughs> yeah, on his yeah. front. <laughs> yep, just creeping forward. Nathan Howes behind that double jab. I think he was calling for Barry. Did he bend the legs, didn't he? So he's yeah. punching up. And then how the, the, how the shots to block and how the shots to, to see coming at times. Like, like always in boxing, almost always in boxing, sometimes keeping it simple is the best thing. <coughs> yep, yeah, get behind that jab. Fade, draw out the lead, make him miss, make him play. I think this is a better round for Howard, though. I think Farry's uh, slowed down at least yeah. a little bit in the first round. Yeah, here. And he's looking to smother and hold a grip. But he's not firing off, off holes like he was in the first two rounds, is he? At all. He's had to dig it out here, Hulls, which is not a bad trait. It's not bad, it's not a bad thing to see there, you know, they have, have a little bit of grit. Yeah, the tempo of the work does seem to have just faded slightly from 4A. You can see that against Adam Reichard, who I said he last fought. Better jab. Newcastle, that was a nice jab. Going back in straight lines with good work, moving back. And just before he threw it, jab, I was like, I would like to see him use his levers more. I would like to see him have his feet there and actually believe in the reach of his hands. I think every shot he's throwing, he's having to step in. He's having to close the gap. But really, he's probably in range anyway. Yeah, he's been tagged a few times, well. that's why. So he's, he's just lost a bit of confidence in, in his judgment. But I think he pops well in this round. Yeah, I think that was his best round so far, Howes. Yeah, Brandon Scott, he's been very exciting and entertaining this week, and here he is backstage. Spider-Man, isn't it? We've seen Spider-Man, we've seen Superman pants, we've seen a cape, we've, we've seen all sorts. What a fight week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine if you had any more days this week? <laughs> but what I've seen from this young man, he can back it up, he can fight, he's skillful, he's slick. This is his opponent. Ronaldo Kajina, 15 fight wins, but there's 79 losses on his record. His game is durable. Bonus, 10 seconds. He'll make Brandon Scott work, that's for sure. Seconds out, fourth and final round. Here we go, full round. Of this super featherweight contest. Sweet, if you needed reminding Nathan Howes, the blue corner, the purple shorts, and the fires for a the black trunks with the, the gold glitter and coming back out to center of the ring for a but better footwork from the house, Sonny. Much better um, in the first 30 seconds here with that lead hand. Like the first round, he'd come out for a double jab, even a triple jab, but a lead left hook on the chest. And he pretty much landed everything, and he, now he's closing the gap because sometimes chest to chest is safer yeah. than leaving your chin in the air. And a lot, a lot of fighters, they miss that, especially early on. But sometimes if you can't get away, you get two, you get close. And I think that's what he's kind of half learning in there now that when he doesn't lean back and try and be flashy and stylistic on the way out and just stay safe, he's not getting caught as much. And uh, look, we need reminded. He is a work in progress, house. Did only have nine amateur fights, won six of those. So, constantly learning on the job in the gym. 
boxing well here, though, this yeah. time. And, and again, what he can do, then, lives. Having success in the last round, the, the talk about, people talk about momentum all the time, but having success in the previous round has given so much confidence to come out here positively in this last. Being able to, to learn as well, I think, and change tactics, as you see here, in and out, and boxing nicely, how's. And you said it earlier, Barry, sometimes the basics, the simple fundamentals of boxing can really genuinely get you around the world. See, people see all the stuff, you know, like, even when you box, people see all the movement you do, it's all fantastic. But quite often or not, it's the straight shots down the middle that, that you have a success with. And what they don't realise is that a lot of fighters that like to put the whole... Oh, we got backed up, but like to put the style on it. What they're really doing is just disguising the fundamentals. Yeah, of what they're making you do is think about the little steps, the little hand movements, the little looks out the ring, just so they can land the simple jab and then move. Yeah. He's obviously listened to Tony Borg in the corner. That was a lovely jab from Howes, followed by the right hand over the top. He has proved that he can listen, he can. And I think Follow instructions. I think he's but finding the target a lot easier when he's not trying to hurt him, when he's not trying to force anything. The, 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 the target's in front of you. I just push the shot, hit the bag. He's right in front of you. Oh, it's nice work, okay. It's a little, little sway back and forth off the front foot to the back foot and then coming back with a nice couple of punches there. Holes. And here's that confidence coming that he probably yeah. could have done within the first round. Yeah, Box Knight's in this fourth round. He's been in charge. And that's what you like to see at this stage of a fighter's career. You want to see the, the round where all Adapt was adaptability and the adaptation. He didn't he didn't see the first bit of um, adversity and then just fold under. He came straight out in the last two rounds. I think he's boxed nice, boxed well. Well, in that third round, he dug us he dug us a lot of trouble, literally. Let's be honest. Well, good, entertaining four rounds. In the super featherweight division there, Nathan Howes, big smile on his face as he walks over to four uh, age corner. Pops nicely in that final round, the, the home supporters enjoyed it. And there's a lot to learn with Nathan Howes, but a lot to work with, Barry. You see there, you got nice fast hands. You know, once he has confidence, he can put his punches together you know, crisply and smartly. And even his, foot, his feet, his nice fast, fast feet, he just doesn't quite know the best way to use them yet. But that's again, you can learn as you go along. Yeah, it's just really picking what input. <laughs> He's got the inputs. Yeah. It's just in his the brain process of okay, this is happening. In what order are you gonna do it? Yeah, and I think right now he's getting caught up where he wants to land a big shot, get out of range, move around the target. There's there's uh, you know a couple of fundamentals prioritizing. I, I, thought, I thought you won the first, I think you won the fight, but what he had to do in that third round is dig into a lot of trouble. And that's and that's a good trait, that's quite impressive. Well, after four lively rounds, MC David Diamonte adds the scorecards. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds here in Cardiff, we go to referee Reese Carter's scorecard. It reads 40 to 36. For your winner, he's still undefeated, Nathan Howells. Nathan Howells gets a decision. A little skip across the ring. He's happy with that one. He learned a lot. For a once again proving what a tough challenger he is. And if you need to remind him one more time, there is plenty, plenty to look forward to coming up on the zone. But it has only made me hungrier. Vengeance heals anger. And I'm filled with rage. But that, that was on American soil. It's only right to run it back again, don't you think? Don't you think? The rematch think? between Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano is officially off. As the weeks have unfolded, she's just not going to be ready. Katie Taylor not fighting and that fight card not happening, we have a problem. Katie Taylor on her social media. It's coming from Katie, so there's no excuses can be made now. And I always said that when Chantel Cameron racked up the belts, she would be the front runner. Undisputed champion versus undisputed champion. Both undisputed, both undefeated. 
no-brainer. Katie's like, no, 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 we'll dance at 140. <laughs> that is a tougher fight than Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor. I love it. Sensation. For the first time in a four-belt era, two reigning undisputed champions will face off against each other. The Queen of Ireland, she's coming home. Well, May 20th in Dublin. Katie Taylor versus Chantel Cameron. We'll talk about that in a minute, but again, early hours of tomorrow morning, Davies versus Garcia, Bragg and Wright's on the line. A tough challenge for John Ryder against Canelo. He's paved his way, he deserves the shot. And again, the X-Series, 007, KSI versus Fournier. And the one I want to talk about, and I want to pick your brains about, is Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron. What a fight that is, all the marbles, two Undisputed world champions putting it on the line. Chantel Cameron bravely sort of accepting the challenge, if you like, accepting that the chance of history, legacy against the, the legend that is Katie Taylor. How do you see that one going, Sonny? Well, I mean, first of all, how often do you see two British? <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't. Um, no, but seriously, sorry, seriously. What a great fight. What a fantastic fight. Two undisputed female boxing champions. Katie Taylor's been a legend of the sport. Been a, been a, a legend of female sport. She was a professional footballer as well. She's been a staple of what I've known female boxing to be as a kid, being, you know, the, the trailblazer Olympian, um, to now being, you know, the trailblazer, the biggest female boxing event ever, probably last year, with Amanda Serrano. And now to have the homecoming that she has desperately craved that obviously the big fights in America has probably taken away and you know you know London and Britain being a hotbed in other uh, fights so having such a big night against a great fighter in Chantel Cameron did it the, the, the proper way through Team GB all the way built up um, wasn't you know, the star pushed forward, but I sort of had to earn herself. And I think it's a great fight that pits Katie Taylor, who maybe, if we're playing devil's advocate, has had to sneak through a few fights in the last few years of her career, I would say, against Chantel Cameron, who has looked very dominant, looked very explosive. Maybe, yeah, a few years ago, you would speak about Katie Taylor up here and Chantel Cameron down here, but I don't think so right now. I'm genuinely... Back in Chantel Cameron on that fight, I'll be wrong. I see, I was ringside with Katie Taylor, Manor Serrano. One, wow, atmosphere, one of the best I've ever been to. And when, when you have a huge, when you have a big fight, a super fight as such, if, when it's Canelo, it's all Canelo. When it's Joshua, it's always Joshua. Fury now, it's always Fury. That was almost 50-50 in Madison Square Gardens of, of Puerto Ricans and Irish. And it was an amazing atmosphere because of that. It was a 50-50 crowd on the biggest scale. It was just, it was just lunacy. And at the weigh-in, the Puerto Ricans out shouted and out sang the, the Irish, which I never thought I'd hear that in my lifetime. But it was so it was great, and the fight lived up to every, all expectations. It, but there was a, there was moments in that fight where you just thought oh, they take miles off the clock. They take miles off the clock. How many great fights can you have left in you? I mean, that's I mean, the issue. And, and, and when you look at the pursuit the, fights, the pursuit fights, the two fights were pursued. Which she might have lost, actually. You know, there, there was, there's an argument that she lost both of those fights. But but, it, but she found a way to win, like winners always do. They sneak over the line, and and she and she has. And, and she had to, like she had to, of course, with Amanda Serrano. That, there's that iconic picture, isn't it, where her knee is inches off the floor in the last round, um, Katie Taylor. And if that knee touches the floor and she gets a count, she loses the fight. And she somehow is, has enough strength and willpower to just lift her legs up and stay and stay off the ground. And it, that that's that's a that's a great champion who could do you know in 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 the heat of battle and you know, when you're exhausted and they punch themselves to a standstill to, to, to have the energy and, and the thought oh i gotta get up otherwise i'm gonna lose and and, and keep fighting on it was it, honestly I, I it was a privilege to be there incredible stuff and, and look i think firstly as well you we've got to give so much credit to, to chantel cameron for taking the opportunity uh, and a, a, a second unified champion on a spin by it, the way it's so <laughs> yeah. you know so so remarkable and look, it's not just boxing that you can watch on the zone. Plenty more stuff on the schedule.
the biggest stage in women's club football. Begins here and begins now. Well, that's up next, Brandon Scott, the entertaining Brandon Scott. This is Kajina. But again, that, that main event that we have later this evening really, really promises to, to be an entertaining scrap. And for, for me, Barry, I don't know if you agree, sometimes things happen for a, a reason. Sometimes the stars align. And I know Joe was bitterly disappointed when that when he was stripped, sorry, after winning the title. But he's got the opportunity now to be a two-time world champion. That's a great way to think about it. But when it happens to you, yeah. you can't feel it. It's hard to think that way. I, I've been saying recently, I think Joe has a chip on his shoulder now for the first time in his career because everything's gone well for him. He knows he's had, he had fights where you know, he has to perform, but it's all gone his way because he's a, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a real talent. And then somebody went against him. But it, it wasn't the fight. It was, it was politics, which is so often the case in boxing. Because I've been the same I've been the same as you. I've won a world title and never lost it in the ring. I, I had to get it back to when well, it was a medical issue, of course. And, but then you know, when I got to the game, man, I got absolutely battered. But... <laughs> But Joe is, Joe's not boxing the guy I boxed, and also Joe's a much better fighter than I. So this is a winnable fight for him. But uh, as Sunny pointed out earlier, you know, if he goes in there thinking he's a, he's a KO artist, because he can punch, it makes, he, he allows Rakabov, it, he, he gives Rakabov the opportunity to have the fight that he wants, and he wants it early, and then, and then he might win that way, Joe, still. But we, we haven't seen Joe in a war of attrition. We haven't seen Joe in, in real danger, real trouble yet. If he gets... I'll ask you, Sonny. If he gets... I would care to disagree, though. I think uh, Cordina, I'm a bit early on the way up, and we're going to see him in a minute. I think Gavin Gwynn, it was Gavin Gwynn, wasn't it? They yeah, thought, yeah. I thought for those rounds four to eight, he showed Cordina. I don't know. I don't know if that was the best Cordina at that time. It wasn't, but, he, but he put pressure on Joe, but it was, it was never, it was never crumbling pressure. Yeah, you know, it yeah. was never a panic. I don't think wins the, the standard of fighting to do it to Cordina is Rakamov and if he stands there and fights sits in the pocket can't knock him out in the second round because what you said about Rakamov you know, he's not a KO artist but every shot is solid, so solid. He's, he's, his feet are dug into yeah. the ground and he's edging forward every shot you, you feel, it. feel it you feel it and like, like every Eastern European fighter they've learned though, the punch right through the target all of them well we heard your thoughts guys let's hear from Joe Cordina Breaking news today coming out of the world of boxing. Joe Cordina has been stripped of his world title without making a single defence. Joe Cordina was scheduled to defend his belt against Shavkat Rakimov, who's unbeaten in 17 fights on November the 5th, 2022, but was forced to withdraw from the title defence just over a month out because of injury. Yeah, I just don't think it's fair. But yeah, wrongly, I think I was stripped wrongly. And I think a lot of people would, would say the same, regardless of whatever the IBF is saying. My first week back sparring, I threw my first proper backhand. And I just felt something popping in my hand. And I was thinking, oh my God. The lady at the x-ray said, listen, Joe, you've, you've, you've got a clean break. I had the operation. Yeah, it was, it was after my surgery that I knew I was getting stripped. Yeah, that wasn't a nice, a nice moment. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was in a bit of a bad place. Uh, I, I didn't really want to see people. I was stuck in the house for like two weeks. The IBF informed Cordina he would be stripped of the belt for withdrawing, as the number one contender Shavkat Rakimov went on to fight Zelfa Barrett for the title. And now entering the arena, please welcome Shavkat. Shekhan Rakhimov. I am Shavkat Rakhimov. Seeking to become the first fighter from Tajikistan to win a widely recognized world title. Whoever wins on Saturday, you ain't the real champ. Touch claws. Она была работать, работать, еще раз работать. And that всегда будет. It was quite frustrating me being there watching them too. Yeah, it was. Not gonna lie. I said, see that? I'm going to land that clean on your chin. Go on, Eddie. Fair play. 
telling you. You think about Mandela? You. you know, and I said, don't worry, you're not going to beat Joe Caldina. Hey, I'm going to tell you where I'm getting money on that fight. Now Joe gets the chance to put it right. In, in my head, that's my belt. I need to get that back. Защитить свой пояс в первую очередь. Других мыслей нету. I never lost my title in the ring. I haven't had the chance to defend it. I'm coming for you, white. Your daughter. Yeah, two men on a mission. The reigning champion, Sakam Rakimov. He's got a point to prove he feels winning the title, the vacant title after Joe, Joe Cordina was stripped and the Welsh man desperate to become two-time super featherweight world champion. Really, really done promise to, to live up to the expectations and be a blockbuster, no doubt about that one. And here's what we're witnessing right now before the belt. We've seen Miles Gordon Derby defeat Phil Williams, Sammy Lee winning in the first round against Juris Zandovkis, Nathan Howes in a tough fight against Foray winning over four rounds. And next up, we have Brandon Scott against Ronaldo Cogina. And last uh, to finish this segment of the evening on Before the Bell is Australia's unbeaten Sky Nicholson in with Linda Lecker. Well, our MC's ready, David Diamante, for the next contest of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen from Cardiff, Wales, live on the zone. We are set to go with a special super featherweight attraction. And now, entering the arena for his 100th time as a professional, de Managua, Nicaragua, Reynaldo Flaco Cajina. Well, here is the 42 Nicaraguan fighter based in Girona, Spain. And like David Diamante just said there, he's about to step into the ring for the hundredth time as a professional. Of the 1990s and 79 have come by a defeat, but he's only been stopped 17 times. He has 15 wins and five draws. What a great servant to the sport of boxing. Ronaldo Cucina has been. Swansea. He boxed out the famous Premier ABC in the heart of Swansea, but now 4 0 as a professional. He's trained by former WBA super lightweight champion Gavin Brees. The young man is predicting that he will be a British champion by the time he's 21. Karate kid coming in. <laughs> Dressed as Cobra Kai. Kid. We've seen all different sorts of outfits this week. We've seen Spider-Man, we've seen Superman, we've seen Nazim Hamid over the ring. Not quite landing. But nonetheless, showing us what an entertainer he is. He reminds me of a geezer in a film called Split. Ladies and gentlemen from Cardiff, Wales, live on the zone. We are set to go with our next bout of the evening, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing, who is sponsored by Betfred, Stagefront, and JD Sports. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell from Bridge End, scoring referee Reese Carter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, four rounds of boxing scheduled in the super featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting into the red corner, wearing the black trunks with the gold trim. He scaled nine stones, seven pounds, 11 ounces. This 100, he's 99 fight veteran tonight in his 100th professional fight. He fights out of Managua, Nicaragua. Please welcome Reynaldo Flaco Cajina. Cajina. 
and his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the black trunks with the yellow trim. He scaled nine stone, three pounds, bang on. His young professional record thus far perfect. Four fights, four victories, one of them coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Swansea, Wales. Please welcome Brandon. Boom, boom, Scott. Gentlemen, listen to my instructions, defend yourselves at all times. Good luck, shake hands. Well, let's see if Brandon and Scott can live up to Second touch. Touch. round one. His expectations, like I say, certainly aims to be a, a British champion by the time he's 21. He's talked the talk this week. Can he walk the wolf? And I'm, look, I'm looking forward to watching him. Um, I think he's kept a lot of eyes on him all fight week. And I really think he might spin your man in Webster. Oh, well done, Tim. We got, got it. It took a while for us to go a bit slow. Yeah. We got it. Darren still hasn't got it yet. I but... just, just, just got it. <laughs> but he is looking good, all jokes aside. Oh, good. That's a good very body good. shot. That's twice he's heard him with a body shot there. Spiteful. Very spiteful for 19 years old. And look how low he gets. Sorry, look how low he gets as well. It's a really hard target to find them when he's coming forward. And I also like the way he's putting his head. It's the rhythm of it. He's going, he's half going, and he's putting the shot there. He's giving his opponent a lot to think about. A lot of uh, a lot of concentrated information. He's coming in, and, and it's not just straight down the middle, one, two. If you look over to Eddie Hearn, who's opposite, who's opposite this right now, he has love hands in his eyes. I know, he's seen pounds he's just Eddie. Bench, like, all, the, all the stuff and the ring walk and everything else, and now look at the, the performance so far. Against a durable guy here. Don't forget that. Yeah, it was a lovely right to the body, followed by a left hook upstairs. Very, very positive, aggressive start from Brandon Scott on the front foot. Like you say, he is only 19 years old. It's a good shot, but he really fancies himself. And I've seen Kajina a few times out, and he's tough. Yeah, he's he tough. Is. He doesn't usually get bullied this physically straight away in the first round. I think it's a very good start here from Scott. Oh, and again, a little left hook inside. He has that wide stance there, Scott, and that allows him to go to, to, to almost... No, he's not rolling, he's sort of... He's loading up, up his side legs side, as well. Isn't he? Yeah. Really yeah. loading up his legs. It's uh, the defence as well, the thought about avoiding the shots. That's very impressive from Brandon Scott. He misses the right-handers. Kahina fires back with his own missing. Again, marching forward, looking for that left to the body. Brandon Scott. Got to chop down with the right hand there, Scott. He feels that left to the body. There's a gap there for him to chop down with that right hand. The body's in the right position. And even though he's under fire, Kajina doesn't panic. He might be blinding himself, but in the corner of his eye, he sees when that glove, that white glove's coming through. Like you said, Barry's here the, um, with his love, love heart emoji eyes. But this is how you turn heads in a performance like this. Where you're looking to hurt your opponent, not, so, not just outpoint your opponent. He's been positive. And I think this might be the last time he gets on a Joe Cordino on the card. I think he's going to say he stole the show and he's not even <laughs> six o'clock yet. <laughs> he has the, the a lot of energy though into these first few minutes. And see but that's the, with see experience. If the, yeah, see if you've got the tank to continue it. It's been impressive so far. I've heard stories, he's a very fit gym, he's a very hard trainer. I heard that he's a, a, a big sparer as well. Doesn't mind doing some rounds and some more rounds, so... Yeah, very good first round there. Um, first I've really seen of him and impressed. Yeah. Great opening round from Brandon Scott there. Backing up. All the talk and the build-up. But he just came out so fast and so aggressive. But with, it, but with that aggression, it wasn't blind aggression. It was stored behind his work. He got nice and low. Looked, looked for that left hook of the body straight away. Was fighting the straight right hand on over the top. And it's that, you can see the, the thought there, can you see? He's looking at the tag before he let his hands go. And you, you picked up in the, in the round. Oh, this is me reacting to a shot. He was really getting his legs low. And he was... But what I liked about him is the ankles he was throwing the shots, he was getting there. And he weren't just going standard, upright, chin in the air, left hook. He was staying low and he was throwing it from there and he was bringing it up through the middle. Yeah, that's a good trajectory. Not so trying to take his head off. Just trying to get it there. Get it to the target and see where you're at after. Good. Yeah, brilliant opening round from Brandon Scott, I'm sure. Second round, round, round two. NBA super lightweight champion Gavin Rees will be over the moon with his charge. Brandon Scott straight back to the centre ring, pushing back Ronaldo Kahina. 
Kahina's got to give you something to stop him. He's just just in the, a little bit of a respite here. But his body movement, Scott, are really quite twitchy and fast and reactive. But his punches aren't coming out from a Just place smooth, of yeah. with no balance. He's 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 twitching, 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 getting his feet right and then landing up. I'm what, it's his feet, his legs are so wide that he's a lot, that he's he has a bigger a frame to, to sway back and forth with. Yeah, maybe against Kajini, you'll be able to get away with really stretching the legs and sitting in the pocket, maybe more than an elite fighter. But for this stage of his career, this is the perfect performance, really, I think. Well, I don't yeah. know whether he, he might still get away with it, but it does take a lot of energy. And, and to explode in combinations like that, it, it does drain the tank. And if you can't get a guy with that early, that might have an effect. But right now, it's working to a treat. Yeah, he's demonstrating a lot, Brandon Scott. There's defense, there's speed of feet and hands. The reactions are there. The, the fault, changing the levels with the shots. Very impressive so far. Oh, let's see that there. He's fainted with the right hand there, Scott, and then threw a nice little short left jab. Yeah, he must feel half surrounded here, Kajina, because it's only slight, <laughs> it's slight adjustments. It's slight adjustments, but there's, there's a constant level of pressure. There's a constant threat. But it's only a little slight adjustment before you get on the outside of the, of, of the left hand or the right hand, isn't it? Then, and it's, then that, it's a blind shot you, you take. That slight angle change with the glove there. What you, do you know about angles? Yeah, true. <laughs> I just ran away, me, though. Again, pushing forward on the front foot. Brandon Scott working the angles, working the levels with the shots, two lefts to the body. Kahina just cannot get a foothold at all in this contest. Bullied. It's relentless. Oh, it is relentless. It really is. But I like how he's not forcing it. I like how I'm not watching. I'm not, it's aesthetically pleasing. It looks like he's in control of his movements. He looks very mature and accomplished, if anything. Well, he's busy, but yeah, taking his time. But them inside shots, it's the inside shots that I'm liking. A lot of young prospects, they don't get into that little pocket and just think about finding something scoring and positive. They don't. They get there, they either freeze or really try and take someone's head off. Really planting his feet, Scott, now. Trading hooks to the body. Kahina, just far too slow. Good block. Yeah, gamely throwing a big right hook there, taking on the left glove of Brandon Scott. Moving his head, he's always thinking. And I genuinely believe it will be the, the throwing sort of 70, 80% shots rather than full tilt. That will give a fighter a good engine. That will give you the 6, 8, 10, 12 rounds. Because you're not tensing up the throw, are you? You're we shouldn't be doing pushing. a hundred. If you was running 10,000 meters, you wouldn't set off a 100 meter pace. No. And I think too many fighters, they come out, they see the big shot, the first shot, and they try and take over. Brandon Scott, nice rhythm to the fight. And he looks in control. Could do this for another 10 rounds, I think. Yeah, another one in the back for Brandon Scott. The end of that second round. Getting on his bike, moving, showing us that he's equally as effective on the back foot. What's been impressive, he's picking his shots well and he's finding the angle, but also he's aware that punches are, might be coming back, and there's not lots coming back here, but he's, he's still aware that there might be some coming back, so he's, he's barely, barely taking a shot when he's coming forward. And even though there's not a lot coming back, Scott's constantly putting himself in a position where there can be something coming back, because he's, he's walking him down, he's trying to adjust, he's cutting angle left and right, but he's getting there and getting his shot off before Kajina's really feeling, thinking about throwing for the most part. I think I've only seen him ship Bonus one or two half seconds. shots, Frank. And I think it's defensively and offensively been a very astute performance. Let's see if Brandon Scott can follow up. Round three. A very, very good opening two rounds in this contest. And again, straight back to centre ring. He reads his opponent well as well. Tried to do a bit of a lot of change, then, didn't he? It's a good work with the right hand, doubling up with the shot. Again, you're showing us the variation. There's uppercuts, little skip to the, the right, trying to find that left to the body. And again, covering it, covering up well, Kahina. But is that, sorry, Dan, is that composure for me? He's really staying in the fight. He's not landing one shot or, or a shot coming back and he's completely taking himself or his mind away from the fight. He's got a very good grasp of constantly making sure that he's not getting blinded by any shots, so he's not switching off. He's enjoying himself in there now, Brandon he's Scott. Get, he's trying to get right on the tag, and obviously yeah. he's really trying to confuse him. It's a very mature performance from such a young man, only 19, like we said, at the start of this contest. Landed with the right hand again, covering up well inside. Kahina just doesn't know what to do, leaning on all 
of his 99 previous contests. That experience crucial in his contest against this sharp, snappy, confident Brandon Scott. And you know what? Outside of this being a, a very good performance so far, it's really refreshing to see someone at the stage of his career showing so much personality, putting himself out there that little bit more than a lot of fighters are really willing to do. Understands the game, doesn't he, Brandon Scott? I think he's enjoying it more, yeah. more than... I think more than he's actually trying to get people's attention or be a superstar. I think he's just enjoying it. I think it's his personality, it, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. doing fr flips over him. If there was five people around, he probably would still be doing it. Yeah. It doesn't seem forced from Brandon Scott, does it? It really does it seem like he's being himself and boxing nice here. Just falling short with three shots there, but we've seen some nice catch counters in this round. Planting his feet again, there's a nice little hop, a little skip, a smile. He's enjoying this one, Barry. Yeah, his concentration is fantastic. You know, for the high work, high intensity work rate that he has, you, know, you, can, you can switch off. You fight, isn't it? We've seen fight a recent couple of fights, we take a few shots coming forward, thinking nothing's coming back. His concentration is, is really, really good. And I bet if we asked him, boxing is one of two or three things that he can concentrate on in his life. Yeah. And I can see that in, in, in one or two minutes of his interviews. Yep, he's enjoyed the week, that's for sure, and he's enjoying this contest this evening. Showing us a bit of everything, moving nicely, the defence has been on point. The shot selection, lovely, just swaying away from the right hand from Kahina and firing back with a right to the body. Even the way he tied him up as he got his back and he's constantly taking control of the clinch. A 19-year-old 5 and 5 he isn't typically doing this. Yeah, so physically strong as well, the engine is spot on. Very, very, very good performance from Brandon Scott so far. And you can see then, he knew where his chest and his chin was. He knows when he's in danger, he knows when he's safe. It doesn't matter what his feet are doing. You can see him move around the target, it doesn't matter where his feet are, as long as his chin and his chest are safe. And he's coming in, he's coming out, and he's taking the split second that Kojina is blinding himself. That to change that angle and then go again. Look, he's blinding himself. That move he did just then, we just seen on the replay just before this one, the move he did before he threw the punch. It, there's like four different movements there. You go left, right, left, right, and then the right hand. And it wastes, it wastes a lot of it. it. It takes a lot. It doesn't waste because he landed with the shot. It takes a lot of energy. But when you're in a four-rounder, you've got you can be explosive. You can try these things out. They might not work in a longer distance fight, but it's... He's, he's boxing really well. The, 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 they're the sort of things you, you try out when you're enjoying yourself, Barry. And also, when you're 19 years of age, Corners, 10 sometimes seconds. When, you're, when you're young and you're fast, you do everything too fast and it doesn't work. And he's, he is fast. Second he's, up, he's four, he's four, four final it. round. He's just using his natural speed. He's not trying to be faster than what he is, which means he's getting the speed, but also the movements are not being wasted. I used to faint. I, I, prime example, I, I was so fast with my hands and my feet when I was young. Sure. I, I would faint. But it wouldn't work, no one would see it. It was a waste of time, just wasting my, wasting my, wasting my own energy and, and, and not having the effectiveness that it should have. And he, every move that he makes, is having the desired effect. Well, we're into the fourth round and it has been a shutout so far. Brandon Scott boxing lovely, he's shown us a bit of everything. He's enjoying himself in there, he really is, and I'm pretty sure, I think you can all agree with me, he'd love to close the style. Uh, sh uh, close the, the show in style and, and get the stoppage, Sonny. And watching this fight here reminds me of a conversation I had with Adam Booth. Boxing personalities and how you can't disconnect the boxer's personality with their fight style. And I think his personality, his mindset, the frequency of probably how quick that the thoughts go around his head, that's what makes him a good fighter. And it's very hard to lose that fitness-wise or, or shape-wise or age-wise. Do you know once your mentality is the reason why you're beating someone, it makes him a dangerous, dangerous prospect. And for me, Brandon Scott's got that. There's been an awful lot to like about his performance. There really is. Barry, if you, your team Brandon Scott and you go back to the gym, what are you working on? What's, he hasn't made any mistakes. He hasn't. He, he, he hasn't. He, he's not, they're going to slip in jabs with these. He's, he's going to come up against people who are going to try and win the fight. We understand this, and he's going to come up against you know, better opposition. But for a 19-year-old kid, and that's what he is, whether he likes it or not, he's a 19-year-old kid. You know, in, in what's, what's this is his fifth fight. And, it, it, you know, and all the attention he's had, he's on a, he's on a broadcast. You know, most people are 19. They, they, you don't even know when it gets to see you unless, they, unless you've sold a few tickets. And he hasn't been faced. I think his composure, you know, his intelligence, how his awareness of everything, the, the inside the ring and outside the ring, is just fantastic. So you tend to think you've got to be able to back it up in the ring. That's what we've been saying. Lovely right to the body there from Brandon Scott. It seemed like he touched down for a second, not through 
pain of the shot, but he was certainly off balance, Kahina. Referee lets the action continue, just missing with right hand, and Brandon Scott tries to fight back with right to the body, followed by a left hook to the head. He, he, he turns that left shoulder and then whips that right uppercut through the middle, Scott. If he just if he took a little more turn on the hips, and that, that uppercut gets a bit closer, and then he hits him full on with it. And I think I think the biggest criticism is right now, for 20 seconds to go in the fourth round. It could be he didn't get the knock that, the knockout. He didn't really get too close to it. Yeah, he's but, rubbish really. Isn't he? he's not but when I look at a prospect, I would rather MC do the rounds over and over again and stay in control. Yeah. Every first round knockout doesn't really tell you much apart from the one fight. It shouldn't have been in the ring with other people in my opinion for yeah, the most course. part. Brandon's got more matchmaking like this. Get the rounds in. Let him actually develop. Let him get rounds under his box rec. Let him have that time spent in the ring. Perfect matchmaking. Perfect performance there for me, for Brandon Scott. Very, very, very impressed. Yeah, the groovy there, Sonny. It was a perfect performance. Really, really closing the, the show in style. So confident, so relaxed. Spiteful and hurtful for, for such a young man. And like I say, he's enjoyed the week. He'll enjoy that performance and no doubt we'll see him again on a card very, very soon. Yeah, huge credit to Ronaldo Cajino as well. Is required. It's 100 content. What a servant to the game. They're celebrating in the corner. Really, really does deserve a pat on the back. And what he is, you know, how many fighters would he have helped Sonny on his way through the ranks? A lot. And you, you half wish there was a, a trophy or a cap or, yeah. or, or just something. You know what I mean? You kind of half wish that that moment in his life, in his career, would get commemorated in some which way. Yeah, he's showing his it, toughness it was, there. It was. He just got beat up with four rounds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, huge credit to, to both men. Kahina in his 100th contest. Brandon Scott boxing beautifully over four rounds. Here's our MC, David Diamane, with the verdict. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of action here in Cardiff, we go to referee Reese Carter's scorecard. It reads 40 to 36. For your winner, he's still undefeated, Brandon. Boom, boom, Scott. Well, a little dance, hands down from Brandon Scott, who moves to 5 and 0 as a professional. It's a fantastic performance from the young man, only 19. From Swansea. That was fantastic and rightly so. Getting the applause he is. And here's what we've seen so far. Miles Gordon Derby beating Phil Williams. Sammy Lee winning after Zadowski's pulled out after the first round. Nathan Howes beating Jafias Foray in a tough contest. And we've just seen there the exciting, the entertaining Brandon Scott moving to 5-0 and with a convincing, stylish performance over Ronaldo Kahina. I think we're ready to hear from the young man, Brandon Scott, who's alongside Jamie Ward at ringside. Congratulations, professional victory number five. How do you assess the fight through four rounds and your own performance tonight as well? Well, part of me was saying there is no way I can get him out of here early because after that viral press conference video, people have, my nickname is Boom Boom, but people have started calling me Boom and Done. So I thought, in a way, I gotta take him the distance. But uh, no, I injured my hand back in August and it's never fully recovered. I wasn't gonna fight today. But I thought I owe it to Eddie Hearn to show him you know, how it's really done. So I thought to myself, get through it. And my hand did go, but I'm 19 years old. I'm not putting pressure on myself. I'm just enjoying it for the time being. So I promise you, Eddie, on our next show, my hand will be full and I will give you exactly what you want. And I promise you, I will get match room embroidered by the best embroiderer from Wales on my shorts. You've been incredible value all week, Brandon, through the public workout, the press conference, the weigh-in as well. How important was it for you to be entertaining, not just outside the ring, but inside the ring as well? Well, like I always say, it's not good enough just to be a good boxer anymore. You know, I, I, I've dedicated my whole life to learning how to box, learning the craft, but I am also a massive nerd. So all I'm doing is I'm showing my charisma, my personality. I love it. See, I 
Let's grab a quick word with trainer and former world champion Gavin Reese as well. well. Gavin, he's certainly a character, but what excites you about the potential as far as the boxing is concerned? Oh, his boxing build is amazing. Um, he rushed a little bit of work now because he's got a bad hand. But he's also fighting boys like 9 stone 10, 9 stone 12. He's uh, going to campaign at bantamweight or super bantamweight and get some opponents down there and shoot see the stoppages. He's got all the talent in the world, he's got all the charisma in the world. He's got everyone talking about him this week. He's only 19 years of age. He's got a massive future. Let's grab a quick word with promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie, this week we've seen Brandon as Spider-Man, Superman came out tonight as the Karate Kid. Just about landed that front flip when he came into the ring this evening. I think it's fair to say he's been good value this week. Yeah, I think we all need to know that everyone needs a bit of Brandon Scott in their life, don't they? You know, I think... But, but he's right. You know, you have to do more these days than just be a good fighter. If you want to be a star, you've got to entertain people. You've got to put a smile on their face. We know he can fight. He's 19 years of age. But he's got a big heart, loads of personality. He's got to work on that backflip. It was, it was terrible. The, the, the ankles nearly went. Watch the slow-mo. I mean, Gavin's got to have his, uh, you know, his heart in his mouth. But, you know, it's all about having fun. It's all about achieving. It's all about the journey. And you know that when you're watching Brandon, you're going to enjoy it, whether it's at a press conference, in the fight, in the ring walk. He's an entertainer. And if he can fight, and at 19, we'll, we won't know yet for a year or so, then I think this is the kind of young man that Wales needs to get behind to follow in the footsteps of Joe Caldina as he brings big time boxing back to Wales. So, well done. You're mad. Your trainer's mad. I had some of the best years with Gavin as well, former world champion, Welsh legend. And this could be a real fun journey. Thanks to everyone that came out to support him tonight. He sold a lot of tickets. And, um, you know, the reason that he's on these kind of shows is the support of the fans who buy tickets. And uh, he's a good kid. We're going to look after him and get behind him and give him every chance. Brandon, just finally, you've not just had a taste for the big stage, but you've emerged victorious as well tonight. Great support in here for you. As Eddie says, do you have a final message you want to leave this evening? I just want to say thank you to everyone that came out. I love every single one of you. And Eddie, have you ever seen Jerry Maguire? I'm Cuba Gooding Jr. You're Tom Cruise. Now, Eddie, show me the money. <laughs> Brandon Scott, congratulations. Well done. The, the flip into the ring, like Nazim, but thoroughly enjoyed himself tonight, didn't he, Sonny? Eddie's really got power over it. He said, get that spoon on again. <laughs> yeah, that's not the best, is it? Imagine injuring your ankle, and as a man with dodgy ankles, especially uh, in a few years ago, yeah, you wouldn't see me doing that again. <laughs> yeah, well done to the young man. And just a reminder of that cracking contest that we have for you in the early hours of tomorrow morning. Two boxers. Whose time has come. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Ready for the destinies. Two fighters. One opportunity for supremacy. I'm going to walk you to the deep waters and I'm going to drown you. For the crowd. He doesn't have the heart of the champion. Two warriors. Raising the stakes. Raising the game. Raising the drama. It is over! Now we're going to see what this kid's made of. This is it. April 22nd. Destinies will be written. Tick. Tock. Time's up. What a fight that promises to be. You can catch all the action live on the zone in the early hours on tomorrow morning. All starting this evening following the main event here. Joe Cordino versus Shafkat Rakimov. And also you can catch the zone boxing show live. Javonte Davis, Ryan Garcia tonight. So much to look forward to. If you get that golden t-shirt, it means you are the best mate. Sonny, I'll ask you again. Firstly, Joe Cordina, Shavkat Rakimov. Who and how? And the same for Javonte Davis and Ryan Garcia. Rakimov Cordina. Um, I favour Joe, I do. But like we said before, I just don't want to see him first, second, third round sitting there trying to bomb your man out. I'm, I, 
as a friend and as a fan and as a supporter of Joe, I don't want to see that. He is a very, very silky boxer. He has very good ring IQ, very good movements, good engine. I would like, and I think he needs, I think he needs as well, as well as about picking a performance. For me, this is a level of fight that Joe could lose on the wrong tactics or look world-class elite on the right tactics. So for me, if he boxes and moves, adjusts, blinds, lands big when he can, I, I favor Cordina, genuinely. But if he gets torn up a bit early, if he gets dragged into that fight, if he starts holding his feet, looking for that same right hand that he landed last time to win the world title, he might find that even when he lands it, his opponent might still be there. Rakimov can take a shot. He might have got hurt last time, but if people look at him walking onto that flush uppercut they didn't see coming, getting down, getting back up, and then coming back to win within seven, eight rounds, if they see that as, a, oh, he's there for the taking, then they have a different mindset on boxing to me. If anything, that shows me that he can be in a world of pain and still very much stay confident, stay composed, and get through the other side. And that's what he did. So much to look forward to tonight. I cannot wait. He comes into this fight with a frightening reputation. A dangerous South Boy Rakimov. This is my opportunity. I'm going to grab it with both hands. Chilling. Retain or regain Shavkat Rakimov, the champion against the former champion Joe Cordina. So much to fight for. There really is two tremendous fighters. So much on the line, so much to prove from both. Who will come out victorious? I cannot wait for that one, Sonny. I really, really can't. And you know what I like? I like when boxing works. And next up, we've got Sky Nicholson, the unbeaten Australian, 6-0. She's picked up a couple of titles already in those six fights. The inaugural Commonwealth title. And then she followed that up with a, a win, claiming the WBC silver title. There she is with Coach Eddie Lamb. He knows his boxing inside out. She's in with Linda Lecker, former champion, in her own, in her own right. And have you been impressed with, with Sunny? I mean, look, she, she's boxed at a canter so far. I think winning fights comfortably. And I spoke to her in the hotel yesterday, and she was saying, look, there, there's, there's things I need to improve on. And one of those things was fighting inside Sunny. And I feel, and I, you probably agree with me, if she was to learn that and improve the fighting inside, she's a very tough woman to beat. Yeah, she's a very good boxer. She's um, She handles herself well around the ring. She, uh, she's got a good ring IQ. She's been boxing for a long period of time. She had good amateur success. The fundamentals are there, the range, position in her feet. So unfortunately, on these sort of matchmaking, the six and eight rounders, it's hard. There's, there's, there's probably not many in world boxing at her weight. There's probably not many that that would, you know, be a step up too far. She could probably, once she gets the rounds, mix up with the elite in her divisions. And as we know in female boxing, it seems to be that little bit easier to maybe move up or move down, um, especially if their body allows them to do it, but to get the opportunities and then fight. So I don't know, I think Sky, um, she's a very popular girl, obviously, from um, Australia. She's, uh, you know, she did the, the Olympics, um, the Commonwealth sort of, uh, trajectory of career yeah. and now she's you know she's been in all the platforms she's been on the cards we've all seen her um what fights are we going to aim her to that i think that's the biggest part about her career because you have a very good female boxer like sky if she doesn't have the dancing partner we'll see what we did for clarissa until she had savannah yeah or, or katie taylor until maybe not katie but until she saw serrano with boxing you need the fight it's not always about the career it's the fight and i think that's what sky needs more than anything well thanks sunny I can just see our MC David Diamante in the ring. So that must mean the fighters are ready. So let's hand over to the MC David Diamante for the introductions of this contest. Ladies and gentlemen from Cardiff, Wales, we are set to go with a special featherweight attraction. Set to make a ring walk de Lima, Peru. Please welcome Linda, la princesa Inca Leca. And here is 
the former WBA super flyweight champion, Linda Lecker. 34 from Peru. And she has a wealth of championship experience, having been involved in five world title fights. She's won one, she's lost three. And there's also a draw in there. And the draw come against tough Venezuelan Carolina Alvarez back in 2016. The very talented Raymond Chapman. She lost comfortably over 10 rounds, losing every round, but there's no shame in that. Raymond Chapman proven she's a very, very good fighter. She drops in the last, but she showed her toughness and she showed that winning mentality. As a former world champion, Linda Lecker. And now, entering the arena, please welcome the undefeated Ozzy Southpaw. Sensation Sky Nicholson. Well, uh, here is the Queensland native Sky Nicholson, now living and training in London. She's 6 0, as I've already pointed out, as a pro. Moving along very nicely, having picked up the Commonwealth title, the WBC silver titles, as mentioned. Winning both over the 10 round distance. This one, however, scheduled over eight rounds. But she is knocking on the door of some very big fights. She's confident, she's talented, and she's unbeaten. In the blue corner, Sky Nicholson. Ladies and gentlemen from Cardiff, Wales, live on the zone. We are set to go with a special featherweight attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored tonight by Betfred, Stagefront, and JD Sports. Introducing your third person in the ring at the sound of the bell from Swansea, referee Chris Jones. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with the gold trim. She scaled eight stone, 13 pounds, three ounces. Her professional record, 15 victories, six defeats, two draws, with three wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de Lima, Peru. Here is the former WBA super flyweight champion of the world, Linda, la princesa Inca Leca. Leca. And her opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. She wears the pink with the gold lettering. This skilled southpaw scaled nine stone, one pound, 15 ounces. Her professional record, perfect. Six fights, six victories. Fighting out of Queensland, Australia, here is the 2020 Olympian, the Commonwealth Games gold medalist, and the reigning and undefeated Commonwealth featherweight champion, Sky Nicholson. Nicholson. Obey my word of command at all times, defend yourself at all times, keep all punches above the waist. Any questions, red? Any questions, blue? Touch gloves, good luck, girls. Well, here we go. The final contest of this segment of the evening before the belt. Sky Nicholson in the blue corner versus Linda Lecker in the red. 34 from Peru. She's a 34. Year old, but she is a former world champion. And what would you like to see from her opponent, Sky Nicholson, this evening? Well, she's come out straight away. She's found her range, touched the target a few times with a jab. And I always like seeing that because there's some fighters that get in the ring, probably most fighters, that every single shot has to have that same intensity that flies out, that same sort of effort. And when you've got a fighter that's comfortable enough to get to the edge of range, touch you a couple of times, and then maybe try and find a shot. It's that control. I know I use the same words quite a few times, composure. That's the sort of thing that would I would want to see from Sky to give longevity to Curry. She's had such a good amateur career, and it's really about settling through the rounds. For Fima, I think it is a little bit easier as the fights are a bit shorter. You're right, she did have a glittering amateur career. Numerous titles of Commonwealth Games. 
in one of the highlights. Boxing nicely here, there's some real aggression shown on the front foot, creeping forward and 6-0 and now, there seems to be a little bit of criticism and it seems a little harsh to me if I'm honest because she's winning fights at a canter, but a lot of people asking for us to get a bit closer, try and close the show in style. She has dropped a couple of opponents, but do you think that would be playing on her mind, Barry? Barry? Back, uh, Sunny, sorry, it was the wires through me. I thought it was the the height, I the height, the, the, the eye level. Um, um, but the, the the fact that she hasn't stopped an opponent yet, do you think it'd be playing on her mind? Do you know what it is? To be perfectly honest, if you want some bed night um, mat time reading, go and look at Sky Nicholson's box rec, the amateur section. She's got so many fights on there that like 150, 160, 170 fights. She spent a lot of time around the world boxing. She has found her rhythm of what works for her. She gets in the ring, doesn't always try and adjust to what the other person's doing. She establishes her identity in the ring. And because of that, we might see 30, 40, 50 professional fights where she's in control, composed, edge of range, scoring constantly, tagging them when she can, making a miss. Because that's her style, that's what's worked, that's what's given her success. Would I want to see Sky go win a world title, boxing how she fights, 100%. Yeah. I would rather that than see and try and change because of outside pressures, social media, yada yada, etc. etc. Well, there is the, the hard hitting Jordan Thompson now being trained by Tony Sims, and already it strikes me as a very good partnership. Obviously, having been trained by Tony for 11 plus years, I know what great trainer he is, and here's the experience. Luke Watkins, 33 from Swindon. Corners, 10 there. seconds. He's been in with some very good fight. He's very dangerous. And I'll tell you what, Sonny, you're very confident. He's been in with some good fights. Without quickly pulling up his box track, he's been in with Coley, Chamberlain. Watkins has mixed it and uh, levels going up towards them before that level. So he's quite seasoned. OK, maybe in his biggest fights, he wasn't a winner. But that's a good fight tonight. Yeah, good one to look forward to. And that's opening the show. On the main broadcast on the zone from 7 p.m. this evening. Back to this one, Sky Nicholson on the front foot. She's controlling the range and the distance nicely. Linda Lecker, seen her in the past. She is awkward. She slips, she slides, and she's she's proving that this evening in this second round. Yeah, but if I'm coaching a fighter, if I'm involved with a fighter, boxing like this in complete control, maybe not teeing off big shots, but not much danger coming back, and when it does, taking it off, being the one pressure, being the one pushing the front foot forward, looking like you're in control, as well as outscoring. For me, this is a perfect a perfect performance for where she's in her career and also where she wants to go. A loss at this stage would be completely derailing, be completely left, right and centre. Maybe when she gets the world title, maybe when she gets the big event, then she can start stamping her identity, the excitement, the showbiz. But it, while this is her life and getting there means everything to her and the 15, 20, 25 years she's dedicated to sport and other fighters have, it means too much to, I don't know, halfway through the second round, let's go well, Hellgun the Blazer, especially for a fighter as good as Sky. It would certainly be a, a good scout on the record for Sky Nicholson beating a former world champion, though way past her best in the lecker. Look, you can see she knows what she's doing, but that's good work from Sky Nicholson. She went wide with the lead hand, followed the, the back hand up straight down the middle, looking for it again, arcing it round, just missing, hitting the, the right hand of Lecker, who's on the back foot again, proving difficult to catch cleanly. That was a nice straight left to the chest of Lecker. Another one in the, the back for Sky Nicholson. Yeah, a good round for Sky. And I think this is another case point example of what we have now is a generation of female fighters that have done the same amateur background as most of the male fighters. They've started when it was 9, 10. They've done all the amateur system and gone international and been a full-time boxer as an amateur. And what we're doing now, we're getting fighters. I've only had five or six fights in Sky. But then you're having a fighter that might have been on the old guard probably didn't have the amateur background the experience they had the pros they had them that trajectory of career which is why she's got a few losses and why she might not be as technically as good as sky but why i say that is what we're about to hit is a level where all of these career athletes, Four, athletes seconds. female fighters are all going to start meeting each other yeah. one example i think chantelle cameron katie taylor Second, sky will probably have three. many fighters when it gets to that 
level. But I think every single time we're seeing someone that's had that, you know, experience in the female divisions especially, the skill gap is often too much in the moment. Honestly, Sonny, I cannot wait for that fight in Dublin. But you're right, we will see more depth in these divisions in the female game. And there are some real stars in the divisions. I mentioned two of them, Taylor, Chantel Cameron, two shining stars. Can Sky Nicholson be one of those? Boxing nicely, she controls the distance so well, doesn't she, Sonny? Yeah, and there's also a lot of storylines now. Because we've seen the fighters, we've seen them fight, you know? Now there's interest in, in female weight divisions across the board, which, you know, there wasn't the, there wasn't a built-up promotion for it now, but now we know all the fighters. That, that, and in boxing, that's the only thing that matters, yeah. knowing both of the fighters. You can build fights, build shows, and Scott Nicholson's showing us some good work there with that left hand to the body, and again to Linda Lecker. Seems unfazed. That was a lovely shot upstairs. Affected her as well. You could see the wince in her face then um, from this close-up from Lecker. She's holding the centre of the ring. She's been dominant on the front foot, Sky Nicholson. She's always thinking. She doesn't waste much. And that's what makes her good. She controls the range and she has the advantage on it. And, you know, fans would be saying, well, she should be loading up more trying to hurt her. But, but every single time that she's really going to try and hurt her opponent, she's going to be giving away that percentage. She's going to have to load up with a shot. She's going to have to fall in maybe if she comes off balance. She's going to give an opening to get caught. She is giving probably as close to 0% chance to lose this fight as possible. And for me, looking at a fighter, that's longevity, that's legacy, that's success, that's world honours. Why make this sport any harder than it has to be? If you can win like this at a canter, then continue. And she's boxing nicely here. That's another round in the bag for Sky Nicholson. Linda Lecker looking a little confused. And exactly, why would you make? Why, why would you? Here's a good friend of yours, Sonny, Zelfa Barrett, looking confident, looking relaxed, composed and ready for what is an important night for him against Jason Sanchez, who's a very good fighter. He's, he's proved himself at a level, and here he is alongside his brother. He looks confident this week, and it's a it's important must-win fight for Zelfa, isn't it? Yeah, of course. I mean, at this stage of your career, everything's not 100 times um, compared to the six rounders you were doing on the small wall circuit. Um, yeah, very good friend of mine, well, Zelfa, a few other seconds. friends in the back. Um, no, we're not going to say no name, but um, bumped into Pat Barrett in the hotel as I got in. Round very, very, um, very confident, very Pat-esque. You know, he's there, they're here, they're here to do a mission, no nonsense stuff, and yeah, looking forward to it. Back into the fourth round, Sky Nicholson versus Lecker. Yeah, she's back to centering. Sky Nicholson, you can see the concentration in those eyes, always waiting for the, the chance to pounce on an opening. So he's just measuring with that lead hand, looking for the backhand, that left hand just missing over the top of the head of Linda Lecker. You see how she tries to draw the lead out of her opponent, Sky Nicholson. She does carry that lead hand low and it tries to give her, you know, the, the, the opponent the chance to sort of land a shot, but she's got razor sharp reaction, Sky Nicholson. So she fires back. So you can see what she's trying to do, trying to bait Lecker into letting her hands go. But like I said before, numerous times, she is a former world champion, Linda Lecker, a long time ago, but still, she has that pedigree, she has that know-how. And like you said, just at the end of the last round before, Zelfa rudely interrupted. Why would you make, no, no, seriously, why would you make the hardest sport in the world, go on Google, anyone watching, hardest sport in the world is boxing on every single list you could ever imagine, and I genuinely believe that. Why would you make that sport harder? Why would you? I think this guy's doing a brilliant job again. Yeah, but Groovy, Sunny, boxing nicely. Like I said, doesn't weigh too much, doesn't doesn't tend to go through the gears, Sky Nicholson, but she's very accurate, very spiteful with those shots. And I said it in the, the ring walk, she has dropped a couple of opponents through precise, sharp punching. And you know what I think you'll find? As the rounds go up, I think the confidence in the fight, the control in the fight is going to increase. Um, 
and then you are going to see the stoppages because already here now she is sitting on that backhand a bit more she's trying to get her um, lead foot outside um the orthodox stance of linda lecker and she's trying to really whip those big backhands through the middle yeah going through the gears a little bit more sitting down on the shot slightly scott nicholson still remaining very hard to catch so quick on the the feet and boxing nicely well she doesn't give you a chance she's edging her opponent back but on her reach on her range she's pouring out of that lead hand that jab and when she wants to try and just score a little shot to keep busy she's keeping busy and that's how she's winning every moment because when she does want to you know take that split second to pick it's not like nothing's happening or lift the letters um, you know on the ascendancy no sky's still in control she's still got her, her pose she's still got her and she's backing her opponent up and landing. So, like I said before, last round, it's still the same this round. You know, if it's a poker hand, and the percentage is popping up on the screen right now, it's 99 to 1. And that's being generous for me right now. With the, what, what Seconds up, round five. Yeah, great start to the fight from Sky Nicholson. Into the fifth round already, gone very quickly. 10 to these two minute rounds in the female game. In the lecker trying to it's frustrate him. Yeah, she is. She's just falling short. And look, there's been a lot of, you know, people saying, well, what will, or how will Sky Nicholson cope when someone's on her chest? And in the lecker just spinning around, then but how, will, yeah, how will she cope when someone's on her, in her face? Well, yeah, I guess, you know, her footwork is so good, Sky Nicholson. Will she ever get in a position where she has an opponent on her, swarmed all over her constantly for a duration of a fight. And she's big for the weight as well, and she doesn't seem not sturdy, she doesn't seem fragile when she's in the ring, not any ring I've seen her in. Um, and to be fair to Linda Lecker, I don't think she's the worst. I don't think the work she's actually put in is, is that bad. I think what's happening is she's trying to hold her feet where she normally would in boxing, and then she's getting hit with a jab. Like she's trying to she's trying to set up where she normally would to find her range, but she just can't get the parameters. Yeah, every, everything is on Sky's terms at the minute. The, the distance, she's got impeccable timing, Sky Nicholson, and that left hand has really been hurtful. She changes up the level of the shot really well to head and body, and she's put the foot on the gas here, trying to close the, the show in style. Maybe she has heard some of the, um, I want to use the term loosely, but criticism about how she just stayed behind the jab and stayed, you know, monotonously boxing through. Maybe she is trying to, or maybe the confidence is growing, where now she believes in her engine because she's been six rounds before. She's been, so maybe that's why we're seeing the growth. But I, 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 this is probably the most impressed I've seen of Sky and probably the hardest opponent she's been in with again. Yeah, like I said, former world champion Lekka, a long time ago, but she knows how to fight. She's tough, she's game. With some very good fighters, and there's that lovely left hand again, taking the head off line and straight down the garden in the lecker. It's been impressive so far from Sky Nicholson. Media face in the corner, Eddie Lamb, he knows he's boxing inside out. She's trying to some of the action here, Sonny. Yeah, again, look at the range, look at the confidence, look at the focus. She stays in the fight the whole time. She gets her shoulders and her levers just in range, and she lands. She gets them just in range. She lands. She might have to hold her feet if her feet are already there, or she'll step in. She's confidently stepping in and think she can get out before the reaction's coming back. And I'd be very inclined to agree with her. I think she's dominating. Maybe not physically imposing every bit of will she could, but like I said, the control is the most impressive. Corners, 10 Being seconds. A, you know, a 16, 18, 20 foot square and keeping someone that at your mercy, seconds that at your base, is, is a hard thing to do. Like you, you have to be a certain level of good fighter to be able to do that against anyone, let alone someone that's been there, you know, maybe a bit more experienced, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, impressive stuff so far from Sky Nicholson. Can she put her foot on the gas? Will she? Will she close the show? Will she stop a former world champion? She's creeping forward. She's trying to draw that lead out again. That left hand is hitting the gloves once more. From Sky Nicholson, she's taking them well. Lecker, I mean, she's been caught a couple of times. I don't think anything's really troubled her so much, but it's just been a very dominant display so far from Sky Nicholson. Changing the angles, the levels with the shots, confusing the former champion. 
just frustrated, doesn't she, yeah. Becca? Like, but, but, but like I said, I don't think, I don't think she's the, the, the worst we've seen. I think she's genuinely quite a good fighter, just not good enough. I think Sky is too sharp. I think her, her reach and her advantages, she's using them too well. But when she does have to move and get out of the way or get out of a bit of trouble, Linda Lecker, she's doing it. Like, she's being a hard enough target to hit. She's not, not just taking levers after levers, but how does she change this? She needs to land, she needs to land clear. But is she a big enough puncher that if she does land on the sky, it's going to change the fight? I don't think so. Well, holding all the marbles in the division is the great Amanda Serrano. And I mean, look, it's a, it's a tough one to ask this because you're talking about one of the marquee names in the division, one of the big names in women's boxing. But how far do you feel she is away from one? Of, OK, look, firstly, a world title and then those big names. Do you know what it is? I think, as we said before, the skill gap is not as... Um, wide from prospect level to world champion. That's why we're seeing, you know, certain fighters winning world titles, four fights, five, six fights in, getting a couple of opportunities. But that is just the, the, the nature of the beast that we've got right now. Um, but genuinely, the experience that she's got and the promise that she's showing in the control. And also, if we're talking about Serrano specifically, okay, forget the, um, you know, the amount of rounds in the professional ring, take that out of the equation. I'm favouring a lot of Sky's attributes, her height, her range. Um, OK, yeah, she's not been there and proved it. And here's your good friend, Zelfa Barrett, in a, in a good, intriguing contest against Jason Sanchez. A lot on the line, especially for, for Zelfa. I mean, don't get me wrong, Jason's got the opportunity to really change his fortunes and kickstart his career. But if Zelfa was to win, Joe Cordina wins. I mean, that that's an inevitable fight, isn't it, Sonny? Well, I think it's... Corners, it's kind of, seconds. It seems to always been the, um, the trajectory for both of them. It's kind of always been the plan. Also, I'm close to Zelfa. Seconds also up, good friends with Joe seven. as well, equally. Um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, that sets up. If everything goes right here tonight, that sets up perfectly. Yeah, what a fight that would be. What an occasion it would be. But into the seventh round of this dominant display from Sky Nicholson. Back to the center of the ring, working behind the jab head and body. There's always a smile on her face. She, you know, you, you get the impression she really is doing what she loves doing. Yeah. You can see it from her body language, her approach, her focus. No matter what's happened on, you know, she's not looking out, she's not complaining, she's not. She's just in the fight. And you can really see it. And it's the eyes that that's what tells the fight on. Yeah, and those eyes showing a, a very confident, composed former amateur star, someone who's loving their trade, enjoying their work. This is what it looks like when everything goes right. So Sky Nichols and nothing. Yeah. Oh, just leaning back, just getting got the stick out of the, out of the shot one. she did, didn't she? Linda Lecker. And I think that little smile on her face as well, she realised she just got away with that. I was very close. Maybe not the best tactics from the former champion to drop her hands with the speed and the accuracy that Sky Nicholson has. Linda Lecker trying to throw a couple of shots with taking on the gloves. I think Sky Nicholson who just springs out of range every time she's put her foot down. As you see there, Linda Lecker, she lets her hands go. Sky's just not there to be hit. And I think we've seen, you know, she's trying to edge back here a little bit, Linda Lecker. She's trying to get that little bit further away from the lever, which I think is the right thing to do. I think if you can't get into someone that's tall, that make them come over their front foot. But she's just trying to ride the shots a little bit. And then when she goes close now, she's trying to, you know, squeeze a little bit more and be a bit more yeah. tight. But right now it is frustrating for her because she is trying different things. She is showing different bows to the string, but she's just not good enough for me yeah. right now. And good Sky work. is every bit of good enough, yeah. probably, for the world honours that you asked around before. Yeah, boxing nicely, really forcing Linda Lecker into a blue corner there, unloading. And obviously as a world champion, shot. obviously as a world champion, and, and, and yeah. I thought, well, we, we, can, we, can, we, can that, we can give that card out, you know? <laughs> you know I mean, everyone's going to be world champion in boxing, as you know, but, you know what I mean, when some people say it. <laughs> yeah, we, we carry clout, Sonny, I agree. Cheers, I'll give you that 20 quid in a minute. Yeah, no worries, no worries. But yeah, another good round. Another good round. Don't let her get lucky this round. She's got to swing. Nice and strong, OK? Very good.
most accomplished performance against a former champion. I keep saying that former He'll champion. Some shots remember, no, be it a good few years ago, Linda Lippel was a former WBA super flyweight champion. Seconds out, it's the final round. Well, here we are, into the final round. A very good, positive, dominant display from Australian Sky Nicholson. Coming at this contest, 6 and 0. She picked up the Commonwealth title, the WBC silver title, and I'm pretty sure after this one, Sunny, she'll be knocking on the door and asking for more big fights. Well, where would you take her next? I mean, that Raven Chapman, the fight, that fight um, seems a great fight. Is it a bit too early? But is it? Is it not? Um, that could push on to a world title. Are they going to meet themselves there? But. You know, that's that's already another interesting fight that's sort of been made of half made in front of us with the you know the mutual opponents, etc. So yeah, there's that maybe in the intermediate, and then obviously at the top in there is Serrano as um is Serrano undisputed or is there more than one uh, champion in that way? For me. I think she, I'm pretty sure she holds all the marbles yeah. in the division. Good body shot though, she felt that. Linda Lecca felt that body shot there from Sky, I think. Also an opportunity, you know, where she does hold the two titles. She's got the Commonwealth title, the WBC silver title, but back in Australia, there is a fight 7-0. Rebecca Hawker, also from Queensland, so that could set up a good defence of the Commonwealth title. And all unbeaten Australian affair. I would like to see, sorry, I'd like to see the referee say something about the shots behind the back of the head and the back there, I think, um, personally. Missing wildly, Lecker with that right hook. Again, those long levers. Sky Nicholson finding the target. Got caught, no Sky she got the way caught, yeah, with a left hook. And that's why we say we don't throw big punches out of range. <laughs> Working the body well, closing the show in style. Both these females She's left it far too late. Missing with a big, wide, wild right hook. Linda Lecker, the former world champion, she smiles. They walk back to her red corner. There's a big smile on the face of Sky Nicholson, the trainer, Eddie Lamb, and the rest of the, the lads in the corner. That was a very good display from Sky Nicholson. And I don't want to be harsh, but it felt like it took pretty much every second of the eight rounds to take a clean shot for Sky then um, from Linda Lecker. I think she was start to finish. Absolutely control when she did get caught with that shot. The last 10 15 seconds was probably the best guy we've seen in the ring. Yeah. I mean, but there isn't much more other than the stoppage, but you know, if that comes, it comes. There's not much more you could want from that performance from Sky Nicholson, is there, Sally? Yeah, and obviously you're speaking to the right person about not getting stoppages, <laughs> Darren, you know what I mean? We go the distance all the time. <laughs> That was a, a very accomplished performance. You know, I, I'm sure there will be tougher tests, but the way she fights Sky, she does have a knack of just keeping fighters at bay and at range and at her will. And that was a very good performance. And our MC, David Diamante, is ready with what I'm assuming will be a formality. He has a scorecard. Let's hand over to our MC. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds here in Cardiff, Wales, we go to referee Chris Jones' scorecard. It reads 80 to 72 for your winner. She's still undefeated, Sky Nicholson. Yep, Sky Nicholson, rightly so. An absolute shutout win for the unbeaten Australian, moving to 7 0 now, beating a former world champion and in the lecker. She was composed, she was relaxed. I don't think you're going to see the best out of Sky until she loses a round. I think so, yeah, when you've got someone in front of her going to force her and make her work similar. I've not seen anyone close to winning a round of no. so far in her career, and I've seen a few of her fights. Um, until you see that, and, 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 and the reason why I say that is that last 10 seconds, she got caught for sure. And then her whole drive went up, and I know that feeling, I know that exact thing she went through, as many other fighters. Once it's too easy, that little bit of complacency, you get reminded and the drive goes back up. And that show for the, that performance there, especially that last little ending, shows that everything that, you know, I think we've got a bright, uh, bright star in Sky Nicholson. Yeah, well, I agree with you there, Sunny. And... 
that completes before the bell. Great heavyweight contest to start it off. And Sammy Lee winning in the first round. Super featherweight Nathan Howes defeating Jafias Fior. Brandon Scott, I mean, boxes ticked everywhere for Brandon Scott, beating Kahina in a very good fight. We've just seen the featherweight contest between Sky Nicholson and Linda Lecker boxing very, very well. And I think we can hear from the unbeaten Australian now, who's with Jamie Ward at ringside. Sky Nicholson, congratulations. Your seventh professional victory tonight. You said to me during the week that you wanted to show you could go through the gears, that you had different levels to your performance tonight. That turned into a very dominant eight-round victory this evening. How do you assess what we've just seen? Yeah, exactly like you said. I wanted to show I can go through the gears. Um, I feel like there was a lot more output. I was throwing a lot more punches than I've shown in my other fights. So um, a tick in the box there. And um, yeah, a really good development fight. I knew she was going to be tough. I knew she was going to be durable. Um, and I feel like we, we got a really good eight rounds out of her. In terms of moving forward now, it's a well-known cliche in boxing that some fighters say, look, when, when I'm in there with a live opponent, that's when you're going to see the best of me. It seems with you, Sky, that that's so true, and you're ready to take a leap now. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm ready for the big fights. Um, the WBC have obviously ordered me to fight the interim champion, Perez. Uh, so that's definitely what's next for me, and I'm really excited for that challenge. Let's grab a word with trainer Eddie Lamb. Eddie, Sky's clearly got all the talent in the world. Is she ready now to be let off the leash, as she says? I'd, I'd, personally, I'd like a little bit more time, but, you know, what do I know? But we're working on stuff in, in, the, in the gym, and people haven't seen what she could do in the gym. She, she's got a lot more to offer. What gives you the confidence, Eddie, as a trainer, though? Like you say, you work tirelessly with Sky in the gym every day. That With her hard work, if she continues to work in the way she is, that she'll have all the success in the world in this sport. Um, because I can see it in every day, you know, this just... Just, just the tip of the iceberg of what we can see in here. You know, she's got so, so much more. Let's grab a word with promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie, Sky says she's ready to be let off the leash. Eddie Lamb says he'd like a bit more time. What's the plan for Sky this year? I think let off the leash. I think you're going to see the best of her against live opponents. You know, tonight was good eight solid rounds, but there's only so many of those fights you can have. You know, 80-72, it's going to be that case every single fight. There was more punches, there was more output this time. But you're going to see her against better against offensive fighters, fighters that are coming to win. You'll see that against Perez for the interim world title. That's the next fight in the summer. And then it's going to be the world championship. And, you know, once you've had seven fights in the women's code, it's time. You know, there's only so much development you can do before you have to take the leap. You're seeing it with Sandy Ryan tonight. You're seeing it with Ellie Scott and fighters like that. She's had her apprenticeship now, ready or not. Tough. And I think you'll see the best of her against the op opponents that are coming to win. Sky, just final one from you, 7-0 now. You're only in your second year as a professional. Talk of interim titles. In your mind, in 2023, what does Sky Nicholson achieve in this sport? I think I win my first world title before the end of 23. Will you not be happy unless that's the case, do you think? I'm always happy, but I know what I want and I'm going to do what I'm going to do to get there. Sky Nicholson, big things to come. Congratulations. Well done. Yeah, she wants more. She's hungry for success. She's hungry to push on and, and achieve her dream of being a world champion. And with a performance like that, shows plenty of talent and know-how to go on and fight for those sort of titles. But it's all about this man this evening, the home favourite, Joe Cordina, looking a little tight on the weight on the scales. Same will be said for the champion, Shabkat Rakimov. The eyes really sunken in the face you see there. Sunny, both men showing signs that the super featherweight limit is tough. But this face-off, I mean, it, I said it live at the press conference, uh, the weigh-in, sorry. If this doesn't get the juices right, if that doesn't get you up for this fight, I don't know what will. The energy, the intensity, at that face-off was something else. And it was just in the eyes, wasn't it? Genuine belief, genuine desire, genuine want to come home with that world title. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Well, look, thank you, Sonny. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you in action. And I'm sure we'll have news soon. I think we both agree. Brandon Scott steals the show on before the bell. But thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. We certainly did. You can tune into The Zone.
in five, around five minutes time for the live action. Rakimov, Joe Cordina. Cardiff born, Cardiff red. I'm Joe Cordina, the quickest Welshman to ever win a world title. I'm fighting to become two-time IBF super featherweight world champion. I got the shot again in my hometown, with my supporters, my family, my friends. I'm just grateful and happy to be in this position again. If you're fearing anyone in boxing, your weight, you shouldn't be in the game. Rakamov is in front of me, he's tough, he's strong, he can punch hard, but you have to have a little bit more than just that to beat me. Big, big night this for Joe Cordina. Good work from the Welshman. A quite brilliant performance. There's not a man on the planet that I fear, but I'll find a way to put you on the deck. This young man is a world-class fighter. He will be world champion. I'm better than him. My hand's fixed. I can knock him out. And don't be surprised if I do. That's how I become a two-time world champion.